episode of Geek Bomb Bass, the weekly podcast dedicated to bring you news and general discussion on comics, movies, TV, video games, and anything else deemed totally awesome. On the show this week is Michael Riojas. Hey, Zeus. Amanda Arias. Hello. And myself, John Sitton. How, how's it going, guys? Good. Good. Yeah, you, Michael, you've never uh, witnessed that before, me doing the intro. No, I've no. not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This it's is pretty all amazing. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, most people get really thrown off because I do it live. Uh, most yeah, people, it's not pre-recorded. Yeah, most people are like, why don't you just pre-record that and then just start it off with, hey, everybody, how's it going? Because it's like, better that way. Yeah, and I'm just like, no, it sets the mood. Because you get the blooper versions of it yeah. sometimes, too, that way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I usually end up deleting those, unfortunately. Um, but <laughs> but uh, you have them, though. Sometimes, mm, not usually. No, it's usually fine. it's like delete it and <laughs> move on. Select, get out of here. I always think of Hollywood Babylon, where uh, Kyle Hibbert does their intros now. But when he first sent it to him, he got Ralph's name wrong. No, oh, really? <laughs> Called yeah. him like Ray or something. By the way, I didn't get your last name right. Right? Yeah. That's, okay. That's fine. <laughs> and Amanda, you're okay with me calling you Amanda Arias, even though we're married. Uh, yes. Well, I haven't changed my name. So, so yeah. Um, it's my name. I'm this keeping is, it. Yeah. This like... is officially the second episode <laughs> of the. All new, all different. Wow, second episode is a Halloween edition? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. It's probably not even going up online until well after Halloween. Ooh. <laughs> That's spooky better. as hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, we, we get the spooky when you least expect it. You exactly. expect it before Halloween or on Halloween, yeah. but it's, then... Jump scare. It's jump. like BoJack Horseman or the Halloween story in January, because they don't have one in January. <laughs> or it's Summerween or whatever. Or Summerween, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like Gravity yeah. Falls. Gravity Although I Falls. would go to a Halloween story in the middle of January. I guarantee you I would go. <laughs> I, there's never a time there, I would not go yeah, to a Halloween yeah, store. Yeah, we, we were like, man, these Halloween stores are going to be open November 1st. Awesome. Yeah. That's going to yeah. be great. I immediately Can't bought wait. all my Ghostbuster stuff from one the second I got paid. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I bought... Uh, some a lot of my costume stuff from uh Halloween store yeah this year yeah yeah but. I try to buy my Halloween costumes I try to make them out of clothes like real clothes and not like Halloween cheap clothes that way I could just wear them year-round <laughs> yeah that my Bojack Horseman one is like that because it's this actual sweater that just has a bunch of X's on it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I can literally use it as an actual sweater yeah but uh but yeah, so this is the, uh, the you know, uh, last week I talked about how there would be new cast members. Um, obviously, Amanda is... Semi-new? Semi-new, because she's been I, I, on... Yeah, I've done a She's done episodes of, oh, okay. of Geek Bombast, but also did a lot of our side podcasts, like Console Crashers and... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, All Rings? All Rings. Did you forget the name? For a Did second. you forget the name of our wrestling podcast, All for Rings Considered? You couldn't consider it. For a it. second, I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, for a second, I did. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, and then uh, this is your first time being on, Michael. Yes, it is. Yeah, you're, uh, you're going to hopefully uh, be a new regular. So, hopefully. Yeah. Um, I plan on it, at least. Yeah. Well, and we appreciate it, and I appreciate it. I shouldn't say we. I appreciate it, because really, I'm... <laughs> oh, sorry. This is your big project. Man doesn't care, apparently. He's like, I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> How did he get in here? <laughs> How did you find out where I live? <laughs> yeah, and Joy doesn't appreciate it. Our dog doesn't appreciate it. Who you folks might hear wolfing at Michael in the background at different times than uh, the podcast, I'm sure. Yeah. Which is funny because um, I, I have her brother at home. Yeah. But uh, this is uh, this is our our... our our spooky horror episode where mm-hmm. we're just gonna talk about random horror crap i actually don't have anything planned out. i don't even have news planned out and i didn't bother to ask for questions and since the first episode technically hasn't gone up right now <laughs> uh yet uh no one knows to send in questions so uh but if they sorry. were to send in questions where would they send them in john they would send them to geekbombast at gmail.com they can also post them onto the youtube video uh, that the, these podcasts are going to be posted on to as well and you know our Facebook uh, you know just facebook.com forward slash Geek Bombast or they can always tweet at us at Geek Bombast Use I like Twitters <laughs> I always like the uh, before we get into anything the like comment subscribe uh, call to arms yeah, yeah. instead of doing it at the very end <laughs> let's do it before we actually give you guys any oh no i usually do it at the very end i I'm know just, but i just threw it it's I easier threw it to do sometimes yeah. it's just i forget about it until the very end 
So, uh, but, uh, and I actually didn't look up any news items for this week. Like, it's two episodes in a row where we haven't even talked about news. Nah, that's yeah. fine. It makes it evergreen. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know. There's not too much news. Start, probably starting, like, next. Well, no, the next week may not start, have news in it either. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it depends on what, uh. You're going to have to change the intro if you take news out of this. I, I, I don't mean to take news out of it. I just haven't been. Uh, but, uh, it's Halloween time. It's, uh, I know, Amanda, you love Halloween. I live for Halloween. You do. Yeah. yeah. I like Halloween a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's Micah's. a recent thing, though, to be honest. <gasps> oh, yeah? Were you not a Halloween kid? Well, well, as a kid, like, we didn't have money for costumes, Man. so I made whatever out of, like, random shit that we had, which was, like, 90% cowboy hats. That's... So I was a cowboy. <laughs> I am cowboy hat man. I was cowboy <laughs> most of the time, because it was just, my dad had a lot of cowboy hats. Yeah. And every now and then, I would not be a cowboy maybe i don't know it was it was like didn't have a lot of options and like the one time i had an option my mom's like you're a pumpkin now and i'm like i don't want to be a pumpkin <laughs> and so I, I didn't like halloween for a while until pretty much when i met everyone we know i know now yeah this they're all like cool. halloween can be awesome i'm like oh yeah it can be awesome <laughs> yeah. i don't uh i'm almost so i've always loved halloween and uh my halloween costumes are either made by my mom were typically made by my mom, actually, up until probably I became an adult. Through high school, she made a lot of my costumes. But um, now our group of friends, and I think this is a problem for any movie buff with, like, movie buff friends, is you have to be, like, an obscure reference, it feels like. You can't just be, like... I'm going to be a witch this year. You have to be like a witch from a specific, like you're going to have to be Nancy from the craft. Otherwise no one's going to like it. It's even tougher because like you'll, you can't just buy something either. Yeah. Because you can't just be like, I'm just going to buy this Luigi costume and go, but because you'll run into somebody's like, I spent like an entire year making this yeah. costume and then for this feel... one night and I'm never going to wear it again. And you're <laughs> like, man, I even feel like an asshole now. <laughs> yeah, it's weird to feel like an asshole and you're like, I spent $25. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> well, it's like uh, what is that? A friend of mine, uh, me and him decided to do Mario and Luigi, but we couldn't just go buy store-bought Luigi, Mario and Luigi costumes. Like we actually had to go get like just regular overalls Overall, yeah. and like, you know, short sleeve, plain colored t-shirts and uh, had to go find hats that looked like the mario hats like we actually found uh they were actually <laughs> like leather um you know like biker hats like, oh okay uh, like the, the, the stuff you that you know uh judas priest would wear yeah um yes you know the leather daddy <laughs> yeah, uh the leather hats daddy with hats. like chains and then we had to remove the chains and then we spray painted them the correct colors and then put like a little circular piece of cardboard with a with the m or the l on it and like taped it to the front of it so it uh, but yeah, we, we couldn't buy the store. We had to make them entirely from scratch. This is exactly what I mean, though. It's like, I can't just be like, I'm going to buy, like, this random costume from, like, the Spirit of Halloween, even though I can. I have the money for it now. I'm just like, I can't because yeah. I'm going to get judged for it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what was it? Uh, last year, uh, I had the State Puff uh, costume, yeah. the inflatable State Puff costume, and uh, my work had a uh, Halloween costume, and I lost it because... It was I good. had a store bought costume that, while everyone thought was cool and was really awesome, that I came in dressed as it. Uh, another person was dressed as Negan. Yeah, like it's crazy now. Yeah, the people that we know, they'll, they'll make some amazing stuff, and I'm just like, I don't, I'm not that creative. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just don't want to. So I... you, you sewed an entire Sailor Moon costume to wear, and I just bought a bunch of random shit to put on something i already had <laughs> yeah yeah you really just have to hot glue stuff onto other stuff and then be like i made my costume or yeah like, i modded my costume my bojack one took both a lot of work and no work at all yeah because i bought the mask but i i had to find all the pieces and then put a bunch of x's on the sweater i thought it was um i like the like buying random pieces and then turning it into something yeah for me like i I, i'm never gonna sew like an entire dress or something for a costume no i i prefer it like i like the idea but i don't have time or the talent to not cut myself while making something like that oh man john's seen me i was mabel pine uh from gravity falls uh one year and i had to sew because they didn't now they actually sell the sweater but they didn't have it yet this was literally like three episodes into the show when i dressed as her and uh I had to sew on plastic with light bulbs in it to get the sweater to glow. And sewing plastic is really difficult. And so I was literally like stabbing my fingers and it took so long. And uh, 
I broke one of the light bulbs. I had two strings of lights. I broke one of the light bulbs. So then I had to undo everything and then redo it with a new string of lights. And uh, I just, I think I like was sewing up until we got to the party. Like I was just like desperately trying to get my costume together. And I was one of the only people who knew who you were that night. Yeah, nobody knew who I was. Like people asked me if I was like uh, Christmas. Not wearing a Christmas sweater. (laughs) Was I Christmas? And I was wearing purple and pink. And it said Mabel across my chest, and they no one knew who I was. See, I made a, a makeshift Castlevania one, if I remember correctly, that year. Because I, I just had a whip already Yeah. that I'd bought. Like for that. It, was, it was an Indiana Jones whip before people are wondering why I had a whip. <laughs> but it was like a fake whip. It wasn't I know, a real whip. No one's going to question it. It's Texas. No one's going to question it. It, was, so, it, wasn't, it wasn't even a real whip, though. But, like, so I, I, I made, like, I just wore, like, it was, like, a bunch of leather. Like, I had a leather jacket that I had bought. And, um, Were people like, are you a dominatrix? They thought I was Indiana Jones because I also took my fedora. Oh, yeah. Because I had a fedora. All it like, takes is it. a whip and a fedora. But I, but I, I, the only thing that was made it more Castlevania was I made a, uh, I made one of the cross boomerangs out of like a giant chunk of cardboard that nice. I had. Nice, yeah. And it took me a while because I had to make it like as even as possible. And if you threw it, it actually worked really well. That's <laughs> It was cool. really badass. And, um, but yeah, I was the only, that's was, was what I wore that year. And I actually still really enjoyed having made that one. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's like I got there and I was like I feel kind of dumb because everybody's things are like super intricate compared to mine. Dude, that same year I was uh I was Desmond from Assassin's Creed and no one knew because literally I was wearing a white hoodie. I had the uh, oh yeah I, I had I, the just the the hidden blade, but it wasn't the full hidden gauntlet. It was yeah. just the blade um, because he didn't have a gauntlet. It was just the blade. Like I and everyone's like I don't know who you are, man. You're just dressed like you're like a normal person. I'm like I'm fucking. <laughs> it's Assassin's Creed three or two I think I or whatever. I also got that too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but... yeah, I think you did because we were just like there was no one. It was like you and like one other person who were like, oh, I think I know what you guys are. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's tough sometimes. That was the other thing. You make something so obscure, people are like, I don't know who you are. Like that year, you were um, one of the Court of the Owls or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. For and Batman, everyone was yeah. like, who are you? And I was like, yeah. and then you were leaving. I was like, look out for Batman. I think it was the only person who told you that the <laughs> yeah. entire night. People just thought he was creepy. They thought he was from some horror movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember then, a lot uh, of people having... Or was it, what was it? I, I, another year, because I didn't have a costume, so I was like trying to put something together, and I I had a luchador mask that kind of looked like a very obscure comic book character called Sonambulo, mm-hmm. um, which is about is a luchador detective. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a very... Uh, it's it's literally one of my favorite co- comics. Uh, the the creator Rafael Navarro is an awesome dude. Uh, but it's just t-shirt, you know, suspenders, gun holster, trench coat. You know. Basically, he dresses like a private detective. Yeah. Except he has a luchador mask. Yeah. On. Oh, okay. Except he has a luchador mask on. Everyone's like, "Are you Bane?" <laughs> And I was like, go oh, fuck yourself. It's so weird that, like, they'll just latch onto one thing and then assume, like, it's yeah. a luchador mask. You must be Bane. You yeah, know, it's yeah, like, yeah. when did Bane wear a trench coat? Like, well, just... I can actually answer that part, God but damn I'd, it. Rather please don't. <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> I know which, what you're going to reference, and please don't. Uh, yeah. You reference a lot of but things. I'm, but so. my whole thing was, like, this was at the time when there were no media where Bane had a mouth. Like, it was all, like, a solid Oh yeah, uh, from the comics. Like, he hadn't appeared in any of the movies yet, so... Or if people was he in the cartoon with him? He, was yeah, he hadn't point. appeared in the cartoon with the mouth yet, or whatever. That would have been. Oh, I don't know. Maybe no, that would have been way, way longer. Ago unless it was, was animated series. Yeah, he in the animated series they give him a mouth. That was uh, the thing that bothered me about Bane and anything outside of the comic was they they give him a mouth yeah. and it looks really weird to me because yeah. it's not a colorful luchador mask. It just looks strange. I don't know. Yeah, but <laughs> but whatever. You know that that happened. I, I will say the best costume. Most of my best costumes have always come out of like I was always really proud of that being a last minute. Same with the Court of Owls one. I was really happy with how that that came uh, out really well. How that looked, uh, especially considering it was literally just uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Wait, I have this mask that I got from Comic Con. <laughs> I'm gonna be a member of the Court of Owls. Um, I thought it looked great. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my best costumes have always come as like last minute things. Like there was probably my best comic was or costume was when I did Skeletor. Oh, uh, and yeah. it was literally I walked uh, me and a friend I was helping a friend look for his like costume pieces for his stuff and I was walking around the, the Halloween store and I found a, a mask that was like a skeleton face with a hood on it 
uh, and it was it moved like the jaw moved with your mouth. Oh. It was like kind of when they first started doing that. And I just put it on and started going, yeah, I'm Skeletor, <laughs> Overlord of Evil, I will kill you, he And like everyone in the store started busting out laughing. And my friend's like, I will buy you that mask if you promise me you will be Skeletor for Halloween. I was like, dude, Halloween's in like six days. He's like, I can make it work. And I was like, all right, you buy me the mask and I'll put the costume together. Ended up uh, liquid latex all over my skin. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I'm a very hairy dude, um, so I had to, I, before I liquid latex, I nared most of the hair off my body, mm -hmm. and then without giving it any time for my skin to heal from that process, I then covered it in liquid latex, which was probably the worst. Don't do that. Yeah, sounds Yeah, better. that's, that's, because <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, when it, when I finally peeled the liquid latex off, it felt like I had a really Your bad sunburn. Did skin just come off with it? <laughs> no, it didn't come off with it, but it felt like I had a sunburn. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn, yeah. Like, yeah, that's... you like probably just kept in a chemical burn. Yeah, no, I did, yeah, it, it, but I. Yeah, it was worth it. It, it was worth great. it. It looked really good. Like yeah. I was, I was really proud with that. Literally seven days, put it together and was awesome. So it's like, I'm kind of, like even like my, this year's costume, which by the time this comes out, it'll be past Halloween uh, I'm doing Scarlet Spider which I think uh, is rad mm -hmm. uh, because I subscribed I did a loot crate where they got me uh, or, or the Marvel goods loot crate or whatever oh, okay uh, where the part of it one of the items was the the hoodie, hoodie. yeah and I had specifically signed up f for that one crate to get that hoodie like that's all I did I was like I want that I want that hoodie <laughs> I don't care what else is in it and then I'm gonna cancel the subscription immediately as soon as I get it um, unless the next month item is cool, and then I immediately canceled it because the next month's item wasn't, uh, or theme wasn't very cool. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and then I was like, you know what? I probably won't get it before Halloween. I'm not going to worry about it. And then I got it. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. Now I got to actually do the costume. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, I went and bought the red suit, and I got, like, a child Spider-Man mask. And today, before recording this, I spent the day dribbling the eyes off of the mask. Oh, okay. So that I can spray paint them white and then attach a, a see-through cl white cloth to the back of them. Oh, okay. And then they're going to go over the... The mask. The, the mask. mask. Yeah, one of the hardest parts about that Scarlet Spider one that I was thinking about with the mask was that it doesn't have any lines on it. Yeah. So it's much harder to find a no-line Spider-Man mask than it sounds. Yeah. Well, uh, what I ended up doing is just getting one of those uh, red party suits or work okay. suits or whatever it's just solid red um and then i'm wearing underneath it i'm wearing another mask like a just like a generic faux jason mask oh okay kind of looks like a mix it's like a it's like a not a jason hockey hockey mask but also it's painted in the theme of kane from the wwe like the old school kane oh, mask okay. from WWE. Yeah. Uh, and I'm put. I'm gonna glue like magnets to it and i'm gonna wear that under the mask and then i'm gonna put the eyes over it which are also gonna have magnets on it because uh, apparently that's how a lot of cosplayers do the eyes for the Spider-Man mask. I did not know that. I did not know well, that either. It allows you to have rad. the structure of the outside of the, like the eyes to be like more structured than like a fabric paint or something. Yeah. Without, uh, with uh, the ability to still like take off the mask and put it on with ease. Without makes a lot it of being, sense actually. Uh, yeah, because I know a lot of people wear the under helmets, the whatever they call oh, them. Oh, yeah. So that you, they have the, the flat shape of the spider-man mask without you know their face deforming it or whatever also cups people wear a lot of cups <laughs> yeah, yeah that's been a hilarious discovery yeah <laughs> like morph suits do not leave anything to the imagination <laughs> i was yeah i talked to a guy this was years ago because it was like a it was at an anime convention he was a guy who makes cost costumes here in austin i, I forgot his name because i haven't seen him in years um he had like a, a panel about it and i was talking to him about it because uh, I asked him if he ever made a web backpack, because I would love that to have just in general. And he was like, oh, I'm working on it. And I was like, so what do you guys do for, you know, like, the rest of the body when it comes to these, like, really tight suits? It's like, oh, you got to wear a cup, because if not, everyone can see everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, everyone can see everything. And uh, the other thing that's weird about it is that a lot of people, if you actually go to a lot of costumes, they say don't use a cup. Um, because not sp not go free, but to use something else. It's like a because putting a cup was. there makes sure it makes the bulge even more bigger. even yeah, bigger. Yeah, then it's just like a, a 
It's a specific it's, thing they yeah. use. I yeah. can't remember what it it's, is. It's though. a dancer's belt. Oh, that's right. Yeah, a dancer's belt. Problem is, they don't make dancer belts of my size. So you know, because I'm I'm a fat ass. You're um. not. You're not a. You don't have a dancer's body. Yeah, let's I don't say. have a dancer's body, which is discrimination. I'm just kidding. But it's, it is. It's essentially I mean, what ballet dancers use. Yeah. Um. So you know, it's it is what it is. Uh. So I've had to. I'm just gonna put on a pair of red shorts. Um. Over the spandex. Yeah, so. it's really the only thing you can do with those things. Until until I figure something out. Yeah. Uh, That's why every time is... I want to do something Spider-Man related is I want to do his uh, his last stand outfit. Oh, the jacket. Because I love the, the shit out of that outfit, but I also yeah. would not have to worry about that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, you just buy the... I'm sure there's places that make the jacket. Yeah, I just need the jacket and um, I guess the mask and the gloves and that's it. Yeah. It's the end of the costume. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's places on Etsy that sell the helmets so that... Uh, if you wanted to do like an actual full hel- full on helmet uh, for it, I might save up to see if I can probably do that next year. Yeah, like I found an Etsy shop that sells the Scarlet Spider web shooters based on the the, vi- the new video game. Oh really? Uh, but they're like, it's like a hundred and something dollars for that two damn. of them. Oh okay. Uh, and you get one for each wrist essentially. And it looked really good, but I was just like, yeah, that looks really good, but that's not good. that's gonna look too good. And I don't want to spend a hundred and some odd dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's not if thing. you're wearing shorts over your morph suit. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like I'm making everything from from scratch. Like you know, like I, I had to dremel the eyes off of a of a thing, which I still got to spray paint the eyes white, um, yeah. so that it's not the black spider outline. Oh okay. Um, and then I've got a, I then got a like I bought. Um, Trying to find a belt, a suitable belt for it that, oh, that matches okay. what the Scarlet Spider has has been really hard. Uh, and it's what I ended up finding is that the uh, Batman fr- costume, uh, they released a Batman belt for uh, Batman v Superman. That while the belt, the belt is unimportant, the yeah. pieces on that are that are bolted onto the belt oh. are the exact pieces that I would need just in a different arrangement for a Scarlet Spider costume. So it's like I had to buy that rip the the pieces off the belt and i ended up having to go buy like another belt that i could bolt them onto and oh okay and then i have to fabricate the wrist strap or the wrist pouches by by hand the ankle pouches yeah, yeah. but in that the like, 90s was strange i'm not even <laughs> the 90s was a very pouchy time yes it was i'm not even done with it and i'm actually really happy with what i've done so far on this costume <laughs> um but yeah so i'm trying to get that done before i go to work on wednesday originally i was going to make a max Payne three one because I I since kind of lost my hair, because uh, uh, I did Max Payne for Max Payne two like years ago. Oh, nice! As well, I remember I had the I had, <laughs> I had to go around looking for the ugly tie for Max Payne two, and it's way easier to find here in Texas than I expected. <laughs> and I still have it. I actually took it to a wedding and everything. Um, but yeah, I remember I did that. But now now that I've lost like most of my hair, I'm like, well, now I can do bald Max when he has that like really ugly Hawaiian shirt on. <laughs> and I was gonna do that, but. Now when I got paid, it. yeah, I went to the Spirit of Halloween because I was like, you know, I'm going to see if they have one of those deluxe proton packs. And then they did. And then they had the trap and the PKA meter and the goggles. It's like, well, while I'm here, I might as well buy all of this other stuff. And I spent like $185 on all yeah. this stuff. And I came home with like a stack like this. Like people can't see it, but it's, it's pretty big into my apartment and my roommate Mike was like so you got paid today huh? <laughs> I was like yeah yeah he's like I gotta figure out what I gotta do for Halloween now though <laughs> so he's kind of super pissed at me I was like okay I'm like, fine I'll do the Ghostbusters thing <laughs> Like, I just wanted these things, okay? <laughs> oh, no, trust me. I did, too. Like, uh, and you can ask her. Like, I was like, I'm not going to be doing a Ghostbuster this year, but I kind of want the PK meter, the goggles, and... My what? favorite thing, though, is that after I told my brother I got it, he's like, well, I'm going to make a new version of the one that I have, which is this one that I borrowed from him years ago. It's a blue... It's, it's, it's made out of wood. It looks like the real Ghostbusters pack. Yeah, yeah, from the cartoon. Um, it's got an Alice frame on it and everything. Like, it's got... Like, it's gorgeous looking. And like, well, I'm gonna make another one. You want mine? And I'm like, I just fucking bought. Yeah, what? It's like Where were you? Nine dollar or seventy something. I can't remember how much it was because I bought everything at once. Yeah. But now I have both of them, so now it looks like a tiny, tiny armory in my fucking closet. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna we take would the hang ghost... that shit up on the yeah, wall if we had them. I would if I could, yeah. but uh, I'm gonna take the real Ghostbusters one to work because that's the one that I want to show off to my coworkers. Yeah. Nice. But it's also heavy as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if it's wood, yeah, of course. Yeah, those things are very heavy. I once wore it for the entire day of uh, San Japan. Like, the entire day. I even went to, like, a concert event with it on. And the other Ghostbuster guys from, like... Because there's, there's Ghostbuster groups all around Texas. Yeah, yeah. 
one of them will looked at me. He's like, "You still have the pack on?" It's like I don't have the pack on because <laughs> there's a heavy crazy. Tier. Yeah, he actually told me he's like, "Are you fucking crazy?" I'm like, "Well, my brother told me to take care of it, and what? I'm taking care of it." <laughs> I'm hardcore. That's why. It, my back was destroyed for like a week. Straight. Oh yeah. It was it was both amazing and terrible at the same time. <laughs> Worth it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to find out with this upcoming work day. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally... What, what's funny is uh, because I realized I can't wear that morph suit the entire day at work because if I have to use the restroom, oh, <laughs> it ain't happening. Yeah. So I figured I'm going to bring like... I went out and bought like a full set pair of sweatpants, like red sweatpants. And I have like a, a Spider-Man uh, thermal. It's just oh, plain okay. red thermal and has like spider webbing on the arms. And then has like a Spider-Man thing on that. I'm just going to put the hoodie over that and just be casual Scarlet Spider. <laughs> <laughs> after, after, I, after I wear the costume for the morning so that they can see it and take pictures of it. And, uh, and then hopefully win the company Halloween costume contest. Probably won't. The hardest thing about being a Ghostbuster is that is also the bathroom thing because oh, you're yeah, wearing a full, full flight suit yeah. with a thing on your back, and you really but for really the flight suit the zippers the in the front though yeah the zippers the zippers in the front but if you if you have to do anything other than piss you got to <laughs> take off the whole thing yeah. almost yeah and so you have like the whole bottom half of your or top half of your suit on the floor at any given moment you're just like this feels strange and then you got to figure out what you got to do with the proton pack. Which is massive. Yeah. And you're just like, shit, I can't just take it into the stall with me. Or at least not the small ones. So you got to take one of the giant handicap ones and hope no one handicap needs, needs it. Yeah. Which has happened to me once, and I felt super bad about <laughs> it. <laughs> Only once. All right. Well, we got some, some Halloween <laughs> costume stories. Some weird shit, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know... Just talking about, uh, you know, spooky things, uh, spooky stories. Uh, you know, it's Halloween time. Anything specifically that you go out of your way to watch? Uh, I just, I, I always watch Ghostbusters 1 and 2. And I and for a while I used to play the game right after that. So it, it would be like basically One, two, doing three. the whole yeah. trilogy. Cause, I mean, that's what Dan Aykroyd and Ivan Reitman and, and all of them said. Exactly. It's like Ghostbusters the video game is essentially Ghostbusters 3. The problem is I don't have time to do it anymore, at least the third part of it. Um, so I'll just watch a bunch of real Ghostbusters episodes with it. Like I'll watch, I'll watch the, I'll watch Ghostbusters one, and then I'll watch Citizen Ghost right after that. Which, if anyone knows, it's the, um, it's the origin of why they kept Slimer, and exactly, wh- and is what that happens. The, is that also the one where they explain why they have the new jumpsuits? Yeah, where they ex- went from the because it takes place the right after yeah. the first movie, basically. Yeah. Oh. And and so they're like, well, this is why we kept Slimer. This is why suits are different colors, kind of thing. And I was like, I like this episode a lot. So I watch it like right after one every time. Another fun fact, uh, that episode was written by J. Michael Straczynski, creator of, of season, Babylon 5. A lot of season one and two was, actually. Uh, season one, two, and the last season were all Straczynski because he was the showrunner. For he the was Head for script. a while. And then they, 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 they didn't want him, they kept like undermining him, so he quit. And then the show lost a lot of its content continuity and the Slimer and the Real Ghost, but got changed to Slimer and the Real Ghost. The show got stuff. really bad pretty yeah. quickly. And then, and then he came back in the last season and then tried to make everything work. Like he, like he, he went. Uh, I, I appreciate that he actually tried to explain why Janine's character completely changed between seasons. Once <laughs> between the season he left and the season you know he came back, like it was a completely different character almost. Yeah, um, the show the show was really strange because it's. It's got one of those things that most cartoons don't do that often anymore, where voice actors change, like characters are changed because they're considered too racy, uh, other people just kind of leave, and then stuff gets more cartoony than it was originally, like stuff like that. I love the real Ghostbusters, but it was really bad about that, Well, especially I, after Ghostbusters 2 came out. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest voice change was Peter Venkman, which the only reason that changed was because of Bill Murray. Which is still hysterical, the way... I guess it kind of plays out, I guess, now. Yeah. He... Well, it's... Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, um, Bill Murray... Like, the the big thing about the cartoon is they weren't allowed to use the likenesses of any of the, the actors, and they didn't want people to sound like the actors either, but they kind of wanted it to sound sort of... They wanted you to know who they were, but yeah. they didn't want them to be, like, dead. Oh, he's doing a Bill Murray yeah. impersonation. Well, it was funny, because I remember... Uh, what was it? Maurice LaMarche, uh, the voice of Egon... Um, super nice dude super nice dude um, 
joked that they told him not to do a um, Harold Ramis Harold Ramis impression, impression, but he did it anyways, and he ended up getting the job. Yeah. Um, you know, so it was it was just one of those things where uh, the guy who does the voice of Venkman was the same guy who did the voice of Garfield. Lorenzo Music. Yeah, Lorenzo mm-hmm. Music. Yeah. I always forget his name. I it's, it's a really hard name to forget yeah. for me at least because I also liked him as Garfield too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I always memorize his name because the stories about him apparently are like really funny. Yeah, like he would because he that was just his voice, and so one time like I think it was I was listening to Rob Paulson's podcast. And one of the older voice actors was like, yeah, I was doing like a Dracula commercial or something with him. And he's like, I want to do Dracula. But he just did his normal like Garfield voice. <laughs> well, I was saying, I'm Dracula. And I was like, that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but no. So apparently like uh, during the filming of Ghostbusters 2 or something like that or right after, someone had asked about and he basically made a comment that he felt insulted by the voice of... Oh, Bill Murray. Of the Bill Murray said he was felt insulted by the guy that they... Uh, chose to voice Peter Venkman in the cartoon because it sounded nothing like him. So then they recast him as Dave Coulier in the cartoon. Yeah, he's not terrible. He's just I'm not. He's not my favorite of the he's two. He's just it. It wasn't the same. Like it just it was. Just, it felt off. Yeah. It, it even more didn't sound like. <laughs> it, it, and it just sounded like Dave Coulier. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no. Exactly. It's funny because it's it's one of those points where like there are still good episodes uh, when Dave Coulier did it, but. Some people like to point out, it's like, the second this happened is the moment everything starts going down. Yeah. Because, like, after, after they started making change It's called the Coulier effect. That, the Coulier effect. <laughs> <laughs> it happens anytime he's in anything. Especially his own shows. Um, poor Dave Coulier. I actually like Dave Coulier, too. I don't know why I'm giving him shit. Uh, Dave Coulier is a weird dude, though, from what I hear. Do you remember the Surreal Life show? Yes. The, yeah, wasn't it, like, Celebrities Live... In a yeah, it was like a, it was like the real world, but with like, like D less celebrities. Yeah, and Dave Coulier was on one. <laughs> and what that. happened was that it was the season that Flavor Flav was on. Holy shit! And he kept asking him about the Olsen twins. He's like, I think they're hot as fuck. And it cuts to like an interview with Dave Coulier. He's like, I fucking hate it when people try sexualizing those two to me because yeah. I knew those two as babies and I want to kick everyone's ass who says that. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's really weird, but I understand why he says that. <laughs> it's also really weird to be like, hey, it's Dave Coulier. He worked with this person or these people when they were babies. I better tell him how much I want to fuck them. Yeah, that's exactly what weird's about. He's like, why would you even tell him that? And it's like, I would not tell anybody that yeah. if that ever happened. <laughs> Such a weird one. Dave Coulier is a, I like I like him a lot because he's still pretty funny and stuff. But um, yeah, he was not my favorite Venkman. Um, yeah. And then, and he's but he's he did it ever since then. Yeah. He even does it for uh, those episodes of the Extreme Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit, that was him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was him. Weird. The Extreme Ghostbusters I find depressing though. Like Extreme Ghostbusters rewatching it was way more adult content than than I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. It's a way better show than I remember it. Oh no, it was. It's the it's it's the it's the same thing some people have with uh, from Ghostbusters one to Ghostbusters two that I find depressing. Where with Ghostbusters one and two, people find it depressing because like, well, after they saved a day, they were immediately like shut down and and forced to not be Ghostbusters for like five years. Yeah. Whereas with the Extreme Ghostbusters, like, well, you know, the ghost stopped showing up. And then Venkman, Ray, and Winston just fucking left. And now it's just Egon, like, making sure the containment unit doesn't explode, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, that's a little depressing. And then especially with what you find out about what happened to Ray in the episodes where he shows up in. Oh, I don't remember what that was. What what it was is he's like, yeah, it was, you know, they gave me this grant at this university. It was great. Uh, But then something broke or something blew up in my face. And now I'm like a used car salesman. And I was oh, like, I what the fuck, Ray? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck happened to you? That sucks. It's just like, it's like, why did you get the shit into the stick out of everyone here? It's like, you should still be, like, he should have just came back to be a Ghostbuster at that point. Yeah. It was really strange. I'm like, that's it's weird. like, what happened to the bookstore? Yeah. It's like, don't you have the bookstore at minimum? He's like, nope, I'm a used car salesman for, I forgot the fuck the name of the place. Because he says it and then Kylie thinks he, it's like him working on something. Um... I think it's your. It's, it's what's what's the name of it? It's like Infinity Energy or something like that. Oh, okay. Something stupid like that. But but he's like, you know, it's a motors place. I sell cars now. I'm like, dude, you're like one of the greatest scientists on that planet, and you just sell cars now. What the fuck happened to you? <laughs> That's what makes it depressing, yeah. in my opinion. Oh no, I know. But yeah, like, what is it? There's like a rape joke in the first episode. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's, there's like totally like 
where like someone like what's the main what's the guy's character's name Eduardo Eduardo they're like hey uh, Eduardo Eduardo has the worst and he just jokes. looks at the camera looks towards the person like, what she's legal yeah this yeah. <laughs> when he said that I was like oh my god what the fuck <laughs> He's that show is it's way better than I remember it because I remember as a kid I hated that show. Really? Oh, I, I loved, loved it, it as, as a car, kid. as a kid. Because well, as a kid I was like, what is going? Because it was one. It was it was the same issue I kind of have with it now, where it's like, what is the tone of this show? Yeah. Like it goes up and down constantly. I love uh, tonally confused media. Well, even as a kid, I, that confu- like, or as a kid, it confused me. Like, the, but that's what made me annoyed by it because it was one of those things where it's like, well, I don't like the way the packs look. Mm-hmm. I didn't really like. Um, fuck is his name the wheelchair guy yeah forgot his name but uh i didn't like him purely because i was like they gotta carry you down to the sewers bro yeah there's a lot of times where he just felt like (sighs) i used to make jokes that he was uh he got in through affirmative action um (laughs) because he sued and they'd let him into the ghostbusters that was the joke i used to do for a long time but i've since have grown he since has grown on me well Um, i mean that that is not far off because of the reason they created that character was because they wanted someone with a disability so to show that anybody could be a ghost. My poster. favorite thing though is it used, it used to be a woman and it was, yeah. she was on crutches. Yeah. They're like, why don't we make it a white dude in a wheelchair? And they're like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I was like, sure, let's do this. Like, but yeah, I like them a lot though. They, um, cause I, I still read all the Ghostbuster comics now and they're really good cause the comics just build upon everything that everyone else has done. Oh yeah, the new Ghostbusters, car- co- the they're so fucking the, good. So good. The new comics, incorporate the all women it does yes it, there's a they actually do a thing called there's a so it's weird because in the comics i have the first two volume hardcovers i've read them um, it's amazing <laughs> so it's like in the comics there's a point where the ninja turtles cross over with the ghostbusters right. by creating a interdimensional portal well the ghostbusters keep the portal and then they end up crossing over with the real ghostbusters mm. um and then they end up crossing over with the all-female Ghostbusters in a story called, like, Crossing Streams. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Um, and so, like, Holtz actually gets stuck in the comic book Ghostbusters reality after all said and done. So then she ends up partnering up with one of the franchise guys. He's the guy that looks like Chevy Chase. Yeah, he kind of looks like Chevy Chase. kind of an asshole. He, he He's based... basically Chevy Chase if he was a Ghostbuster, like, literally. Nice. That's, That's amazing. Of awesome. Yeah. He, he's a total asshole. He first tried to run the Ghostbusters out of business by stealing their technology and recreating it for his own purposes uh-huh. and creating a rival Ghostbuster company. And then they ran him out of business or they, they ended, he ended up causing something that was so bad that, you know, that it, his business went out of business. Yeah. And well, then they basically said, look, we don't have a problem if you want to do a franchise in another state. Matter of fact, why don't you go to Chicago with the guy from the video, with the rookie from the video game game? Uh, in partner up with him because he's in Chicago by himself. Did they give him a name or is he still no, just called well, the rookie? I don't think that he has a name still, but his still says rookie on his name tag. That's amazing. There's actually a really funny joke because uh, Winston even asks him at one point in the comic, he's like, yo, rookie, you know you're not a rookie anymore. You own your own franchise. That's like his last name. And he looks at him and goes, oh no, I'm never taking this thing off because if I piss anybody off, they see the word rookie and they go, oh, I'll talk to your manager later and storm off. Yeah, my favorite thing is that when he's hanging out with the Chevy Chase dude, like they'll, they're, they always talk to the Chevy Chase guy. Like, yeah, it was great work or whatever. He's like, I'm the one who's in charge. He's like, you're the one who still wears the w- rookie thing. Don't blame this on me. <laughs> he's like, I just look like I'm the guy who's in charge now because you won't take that off. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's kind of a nice little nod. There's, yeah. they, they act, it's funny because the, there's a part... This was one, one my issue with the remake movie originally, because the comic had accidentally mentioned this, which is that story, the the one where he first appears, which is that if you destroy a ghost, the energy has to go somewhere, <laughs> and because they don't catch any ghosts, or they yeah, only catch the like rival, one ghost. The guy who steals the technology and starts his own ghost busting company to run the ghost busters right. out of business. Instead of catching them, he destroys them. Mm-hmm. He disperses them, basically. Yeah. So but what happens to them if you do that? The energy has to go somewhere. So they all fuse into one giant fucking ghost that's like nigh impossible to take out. Oh. And so they they bring it up because the, in the movie, they don't only catch one ghost the entire movie. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of it, they're basically doing that. They're dispersing them. And so they're like, well, how come you know it turned out fine when we did it? It's like, well, what happened after you guys did that? He's like, well, 
we sucked all the energy down a d interdimensional hole. They're like, well, there, there it is. Like that, it, it all went somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't have to deal with it, kind of thing. And they're like, oh, I that guess would that have been makes kind a lot of, of sense. Interesting if they did a second movie and they talk about that, like you can't actually. That's what I like about the comic is it's willing to do new things with stuff that other people have done. Like it's willing to be like, hey, all this, all the game stuff is now canon. Uh, this is the reason they don't use the packs from the game. This is the reason certain characters look kind of weird to them. Yeah. Or these are characters from Extreme Ghostbusters that are now hanging out here, but they're not exactly them at the same time. Yeah. Although I think one of my favorites was Janine's boyfriend, Roger. Oh. Because <laughs> Janine had a boyfriend that looks just like Egon from the Extreme Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. And when they do the crossover with the real Ghostbusters, she thinks that Egon is Roger. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they look the and same, she's like Roger. He's like, who? I don't. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, oh, you're, uh, you just look like someone I know. And so in the newest one, the there's a mention because in the newest one it's called Crossing Over. Mm -hmm. It's like it's basically Crisis of Infinite Ghostbusters essentially. Nice. Like they got a bunch of different Ghostbusters, even the old Nintendo ones. Yeah, it's adorable as hell. Uh, but at the end of every issue, there's a, um, it's basically like an info dump of like this is what's going on with this universe because it's it's basically. Every universe they've talked to, essentially, is just, like, a file that Janine has given Walter Peck at some point. Ah. Like, this is what's going on with these people. And my favorite was that it, when it talks about the extreme Ghostbusters, like, yeah, the weird thing is that Egon, this Egon looks exactly like her old boyfriend, so we just have not told Janine about this guy at all <laughs> because we don't want her to freak out. <laughs> I love shit yeah. like that. That yeah. comic's so goddamn yeah, it's, good. It's really, really good. Um, so good at it. And they've kept their continuity the whole th way. Like, they, they always talk about the Ninja Turtles whenever somebody brings up the portal. They're like, so how did it happen? It's like, well, our friends, this Ninja Turtle thing happened. In fact, in the beginning and crossing over, they ask Holtzman how it happened, but she doesn't actually know the story. She's like, yeah, these uh, samurai lizards or something <laughs> were there, and they gave them the technology, I guess. It's like, and it shows, like, these samurai lizards. <laughs> like, literal, literal, literal lizards instead of them as the Ninja Turtles, and I thought that was really funny. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been good. Like, I, I've really enjoyed the, the ghost. But, like, the, the current Power Rangers comic book mm -hmm. kind of reminds me of the way IDW was doing Ghost, is doing Ghostbusters. It's people who love the series. Yeah. And that's what makes them so good. Yeah. Is if you, it, it, they didn't get, like, random people. They're like, hey, have you seen a... Have you seen this thing called the Power Rangers? Make a, make a thing about it. Like, it's not like some dude, some 50-year-old dude who never heard of it and just saw a picture of it and was like, they're teenagers and they do rap, rapping and breakdancing. It's like, no, these are actual people and I make think, them awesome. <laughs> I think Power Rangers and um, Ghostbusters fall in this perfect spot of having the right amount of fans, but not enough fans, so they can't just be marketed and capitalized on because if you try you end up with like the newest reboot of ghostbusters where you're just not it doesn't make that much money and nobody really cares about it but if you do it in comic book form you get like the fans that want the dedicated story and keep it like its own continuity and like keep true to the its history while still doing new stuff and everything without just exploiting it or whatever Power yeah. Rangers does that too. Yeah. Where it's just like you get the fandom attached to it. and But it's not, you know, oh, all we have to do is put the, their name on it and you just shoot it out. Like Batman has that problem where you can literally just be like, it's a Batman thing. And then yeah. they just shove it out. Batman and meets like, Judge Dredd and Batman meets the Max. And they're like, does anybody. Oh my God. I read that first these? issue of Batman meets the Mask and that was. I love Sam Keith, but dear lord. Yeah, it was pretty bad. That was a um, hard read. I forgot how uh, I forgot how he writes, so it was a real hard read. Batman Ninja Turtles wasn't too bad, though. I like that one a lot, speaking of Ninja Turtles again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they had a lot of really good crossovers and stories. Uh, Batman has some weird crossovers. So does, actually, all of DC has some weird crossovers. DC yeah. does weird things with their I mean, crossovers. Even the Power Rangers Justice League was kind of weird. I love that one, though. Yeah, it's... Like, there was stuff in that that I didn't think I wanted, but I was like, I'm glad that happened. Like, yeah. seeing the, the pink ranger use the boxing glove arrow. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool with this. <laughs> I just like when they're going through stuff, she picks up and goes, can I keep this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I love that. She's like, I, I, I've grown attached to it. She's like, yeah, you can take it. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I've got more. Yeah, it's like yeah. Batman's just like, it's not even mine. <laughs> but seeing yeah. that, I remember seeing Superman and Batman being saved by the Megazord. Like, to, like when they like slam into... Lord Zed, and I was like, this is the pick-me-up I didn't think I needed. 
Yeah. It was so good. But uh but yeah, so Ghostbusters, um Uh we try to watch the thing. Well, so I'm a John Carpenter hound. Mm-hmm. We both are. Yeah. Well, one of us has a John Carpenter related tattoo. And it's sitting not right me. under. And I'm sitting directly under. <laughs> the, the yeah, my some of them, they live tattoo, <laughs> and then I'm sitting. Uh, my chair is directly underneath the they live poster. But I couldn't tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so just only th- there's a wall that they can't see. That one of them is a John Carpenter. Oh poster. shit! I'm sitting in front of the Ghostbusters one yeah, too. That's the only poster <laughs> that's mine that's in this room, by the way. Yeah. These. Yeah. The Blues Brothers is my. I mean, we have a Blues Brothers. Uh, these are Mondo. Uh, Tim Doyle. So uh, Nakatomi. Uh, Nakatomi. Nakatomi, ones. and then the they live. Uh, special edition poster, and then we have the world e- world's end uh, poster in this room, and the yeah. uh, Ghostbuster one. I'm hoping to fill uh, the hallway with the uh, with a bunch of lithographs from the upcoming uh, MSD3K Live. Oh, that is. Um, which that's oh, next that's week. pretty soon. Yeah, it's next, yeah week. It's next week. I need to give my roommate some money to get me a shirt. Because he's gonna go, and I, 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 yeah. I won't be able to go. <laughs> yeah, we're going to oh, we're both shows both. and. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. for Halloween, uh, I John Carpenter everything. Uh, we it used to just be uh the thing and in the mouth of madness, and then we've slowly added they live, which arguably isn't a horror film, yeah, I sci fi thriller oh, okay. more. Um, it's got a great fight sequence though. It the best fight the sequence. Best, yeah. The best. The fight sequence. <laughs> yeah. It is the only fight sequence that war it is worth anything. That's why I love San Zero 4 so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to <laughs> replay the, the whole, thing. whole thing. I was so happy about that. It's like, yeah, I'm going to just sit back and watch this. <laughs> uh, and then uh, recently we added, or we... Prince we've, of Darkness. Prince of Darkness. And I um, can't think of the other one. That's going to bother Is me. Is it the too. Muppet Show? Sorry. Yeah. Everything <laughs> I do is the Muppet Muppets. Show. Uh, but yeah, no. <laughs> Prince of Darkness is like a big one. I'm trying to think of uh, The Fog. Oh, The Fog. Oh, okay. yeah. Which is also a really good one. I know they made a terrible remake of that too, didn't they? With Tom Welling? Yeah. 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 For Tom, Tom Welling and Doesn't the girl ha- from You Lost? don't have to say it's terrible if you just say Tom Welling's in it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know no if that's offense necessarily Tom Welling, true. But... Smallville was a show that I liked for most of it. But his movies were never good. He had, what, one movie? <laughs> he did that, and he did uh, the... Oh, God. Well, apparently it, he was really good in Lucifer uh, recently. Oh, yeah, apparently. Oh, yeah. But that's super recent, too, yeah. so... He's apparently mellowed out. <laughs> it's probably helped, yeah. He was in one of those movies where it's like... Cheaper by the Dozen. Or... Cheaper by the oh, Dozen. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He's in both Cheaper by the Dozen films. Man, those films are awful. Yeah. See? His movies are bad. His uh, television is good. Movie's bad. I guess that's true. I didn't like Smallville. I liked it for the first chunk of it, but then it starts like losing what it was after a while. I liked it for Lex Luthor and Michael Ro- he basically was Michael Rosenbaum. Oh my god. That was uh, the funniest thing about Michael Rosenbaum. He was the voice of the Flash in a cartoon. Yeah. And he was also Lex Luthor at the same time somewhere else. I love when they, in the cartoon, when they did the episode where Lex Luthor and the Flash swapped bodies. Oh yeah, that was great. Because he got great. to do both his he things. Got, yeah, and then yeah. also Clancy Brown got to, you know, have fun with his part as well. Aren't you going to wash your hands? No, because I'm evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lost it when he said also, that. Also, <laughs> that, no, what I lost, what, what it lost me on that is that uh, when, I forget the, the female villain's name uh, in that, she's like talking to, to Lex, like, Lex, are you feeling okay? You seem really tense and kind of out of it. And he's like, I don't know, maybe I just need direction. She goes, you know what? Let me help you relax. And they walk into a room, and then you, it just there's a silent beat, and then you just hear Lex go, "That's not very relaxing." <laughs> and then it cuts away, <laughs> and then it cuts back, and she's like, "That's you've never been like that before. You were so attentive, and blah blah blah, like just kind of like, but like never actually saying what it was." And I'm like, "They just had sex. There's no way they didn't have sex." Yeah, there's some really good ones in that. The other part is when Lex is at the Flash. He's like, "I'm gonna find out who this is." He takes his mask off. And he's like, "I don't know who the fuck this <laughs> yes, is." That's the face. Nothing <laughs> he's else. just some dude. Like, I don't know. Yeah, like, it only would make sense if he did that to like Bruce Wade or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and that's part of why the joke works. But yeah, he's so good in that show, though. Like yeah. both of them. And I love Clancy Brown. I wish Michael Rosenbaum did more. He has a DC podcast. Things. Yeah, yeah. You, you, can just listen, po- you can listen to him be an adorable podcaster. I think he's hysterical. Yeah. yeah I think he's amazing. I loved him in uh, the uh, pool hall junkies. <laughs> I 
love sororities. I loved him in sorority. <laughs> oh, see, I loved him in uh, school, uh, Pool Hall Junkies. That was good, too. Yeah. He uh, was really good in a lot of stuff. He was a villain in what was that movie with uh, Jamie Kennedy where he was like a, ki- a kid who was like a b-boy or dancer he wannabe. was the villain Holy yeah shit. he was the the boy the, the asshole boyfriend boy yeah by the way if anyone's wondering and then he wondering. like he gets a head injury goes into a coma and when he comes out of it or whatever uh and then like the girl that he really liked is dating this asshole which is michael, michael rosenbaum. rosenbaum yeah he's so good at playing like a random asshole yeah but it's, also like a sweet guy at the same time it's so funny how hilarious he is and then he just he had a show on fox for like a little bit i think with christian slater and I didn't have to say more than that for it to be canceled. Oh. <laughs> Poor Christian Slater. I love Christian yeah. Slater. A lot of people do, except for apparently TV. Enough people, <laughs> not enough people. <laughs> the one time, though, I think I what is it? Not I robot. I was an I Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot. Yeah. The people like that enough, but I don't know if it was because of Christian Slater or not. Well, I mean, he's in it, but he's not like in it in it <laughs> he was part of the first season's major push yeah oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah press but then after that they were like Meh. well no one knew who um i don't know his name to be honest Rainy giant eyes <laughs> malik yeah R- his R- eyes R- freaking rami out. malik yeah. yeah rami malik no one really knew who that guy that well i knew him as a dude from until dawn at that yeah, point yeah no, yeah so that's all i knew him as like every now and then i'll watch something i'm like oh it's that guy now and everyone's now gonna know him as freddie mercury yeah Dude, well, I don't know if that's exactly true. like Freddie Mercury. Spot on, creepy. I heard bad things about that movie though. I can't. I trust that that movie will be good. I don't. I have. I don't expect it to be good, to be honest. Especially yeah. after hearing why they didn't make the Shasha Baron Co- Cohen one. Because the, the the was the other band mates. The other or? band members yeah. were like, like we want to be more about us, and they're like, no, that's not the point of this movie. Yeah. So apparently that might be what's going on with this new one, but we're not sure yet. Yeah, I think they said they had the band's blessing for this one, and I was like, every time I've heard that, it's never turned out well. It's never a good it's thing. It's never been a good movie. Every time you hear the band's like, I think it's perfect, it's never been good. I think how much it adores me is the best part. It's like, no, that's not why anyone watched this film. Yeah. <laughs> that's, why, that's why the fact that Ringo Starr is one of the only people of the, the Beatles alive is the reason why you can't really make a good Beatles movie, <laughs> I, think, I think, to be honest. Because yeah. Ringo would be like, make it better about me. Make me more important than people remember Ringo Starr. <laughs> Which is a shame, because I like Ringo Starr, but I feel like he would hold something back that way. I like Ringo too, but the other band members shit on him the entire time. They did. Oh man, my favorite joke is uh, when they ask if uh, Ringo is the best <laughs> drummer in the world, and they're like, he's not even the best drummer in the Beatles. <laughs> I think that's what I like. Did you ever watch uh, Dewey Cox or Walk Hard? Oh, yes, yeah. I made mean, John yeah. watch that this yeah. year. I, I ignored it for a long time. I love that movie. That movie is way better than it deserves to be. Like right? I don't know it's, why it's so good. It's a perfect because it's because it, it what it does what a good parody movie is supposed to do, which is that it makes the movie that it's making fun of. Yeah. Still, because that's the issue I have with most parody movies. They're just like let's just make fun of it. It's like no, you have to make the actual movie you're making fun of at the same time. That, yes. And thank that's you. why Dewey well, Cox why, works so well. That's why, like, the first two scary movies worked and the, yeah, the rest exactly. of them didn't. Yeah, because, well, they turn into just, like, reference movies. Yeah. Where it's just like. And everything else just did that instead. Like, they didn't try to. Yeah, it turned into an episode of Family Guy. And that's why that's why Dewey Cox works so well for me because it's, it's an actual, like, hey, this is his life story. It's also a legitimate history of rock and roll yeah and he's from... also has really good songs at the same time yeah. even if their lyrics are really dumb yeah and, but at the same time like he, he meets like characters throughout history like you said it's a great history <laughs> like lesson jack white as elvis and when, yeah and, and when he meets the beatles they're just shitting on ringo the entire time <laughs> yeah, so great. i have a song about an octopus like just like making fun of him <laughs> and he's like i'm the leader of the beatles well fuck you i'm the leader of the beatles <laughs> Oh man! Like and it, and it just keeps doing that as it progresses, and even his music style changes with it. Yeah, because at first he's like Johnny Cash, and then he's like Bob Dylan. Well, he starts off as Ray Charles and learning the blues. Yeah, right, and then he becomes Johnny Cash. Uh, he meets people like Elvis Presley. Look out! <laughs> you know, only two people in this world that know karate. He's fucking, <laughs> that's so fucking funny. Uh, that movie is so good, and it's also one of the few movies where it's just like. 
they just put a dick on screen for a long period of time. Oh, yeah. I for, yeah, because the guy's, like, on the phone, right? Yeah, and then there's just, just somebody standing next to him. He just him. walks. It's like a like a groupie just walks up right next to him and just talks to him with his dick right into yeah. his face. And he doesn't give a fuck the I, entire it's, sequence. It's, it's fucking great. And it has great running gags, like the sink. He's always oh, yeah. ripping a sink <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> Uh, every time he goes into the bathroom when he's having like an emotional breakdown, his, uh, his friends in there smoking something. something or, yeah, doing you don't want any part of the shit, do it? It, it makes, makes all your bad, <laughs> <laughs> makes all your bad feelings into great feelings. <laughs> it makes sex even better. I actually, I I made that joke when Matt Frank was talking about how he couldn't play Spider Man until he's done with his right, drawing his his new comic. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I put up. <laughs> I put, I put that whole thing I'm like don't you don't want any part of this shit man Frank Spider-Man makes all your bad feelings into good feelings and it makes you want to be Spider-Man and only want to play it and the story's really good and it's really fun and it's amazing and you don't want any part of this shit I even put the gif of him saying that on it cause it's like oh, it's, and, and his whole beef with Dewey at the end of the film is the funniest part to me because everybody else doesn't want to work with Dewey because, like, he slept with his wife or, like, he caused him to have, like, weird feelings about him because oh, he slept yeah, with him. Oh, yeah, because he slept with him. And he talks to him. He's like, well, what's your beef? He's you like, you never, never paid for drugs. Not, not once. once. That's the only issue he has with them the entire time. I don't know why my favorite joke in that movie is when Dewey Cox says, I have to resist temptations. And then the temptations are in the <laughs> backstage singing. He's like, ah, the temptations. And he just runs. I fucking, that movie, Such an easy joke. That movie is so stupidly clever, and I say stupidly clever because some of the cleverest jokes are really dumb. dumb. Yeah, but they're so good. Like especially the guiltiest charge sequence because he's singing the song, and in the middle of it, he just goes, "I don't need any help, anybody's help to get through this," because he's talking about his drug addiction. <laughs> but he's not even like trying to hide it or be subtle about it. He's yeah. just outright telling them. He's like, "I've never lost a fight." He's like fighting the cops. <laughs> I'm sorry that I tracked it, but I fucking love that yeah, movie. Yeah, it's such a good movie. I don't even remember why I brought it up now. We're stuck there now. <laughs> the Beatles. I brought it up because of the Beatles. Uh, yeah. Halloween, yeah. Well, you know what's a good parody <laughs> movie to stick to it? Uh, kind of segue from that is the Young Frankenstein and... Um, Oh my god, his Dracula Dead and Loving Dead It. Love oh, Mel yeah. Brooks I love Dracula movies. Dead and Loving It so much. So like many it, people don't like that film. And it, it, well, well, they're it's, dumb. It's partially because it kind of came out at a time when people thought his movies weren't as good. Like they were kind of taken like a downward. Yeah. Though I still love that movie. Well, <laughs> it's got one of my favorite jokes is when uh, Steven Weber has to kill oh, yeah. uh, a <laughs> vampire. And every time he hits it, more just blood just flies everywhere. out of him. <laughs> she just ate, so. Where <laughs> <laughs> Mel Brooks hides as Van Helsing, he like hides and he yeah. just keeps making him do it, and then he doesn't have anything on him. Yeah. Oh man. My my favorite joke is is pretty much everything that comes out of Renfield's mouth. Oh yeah. I didn't see anything. I didn't see. I saw it. It's <laughs> so funny how because I use that line a lot. I saw Dracula and loving it before I saw the original Dracula with Bela Lugosi. Same. And so that character I thought was an over the top comedic like decision for Dracula and loving it. And then when you watch Dracula, it's fairly similar like he didn't do much to make him like an insane he just said different lines that's yeah, all it is but, but the, <laughs> yeah but the like acting choices were all exactly the same it's just really funny to see because he was just a nuts character exactly like exactly why a good parody movie works though is you just make that movie mel brooks uh to me makes the best parody movies oh right? absolutely he's, he's always made the best that's why blazing movies. saddles is my favorite parody film yeah. of all time but Sometimes I'm, it's also just, I'm a huge western nerd so <laughs> uh he might only if i have to have any gripe with mel brooks it's that he doesn't end movies he just like uh it was a movie you guys shouldn't <laughs> expect an ending and then just like leaves it he's really bad about because history yeah. of the world did the same thing they literally just ride off into the end credits no yeah. and then they advertise history of the world part two yeah no yeah. Jews in space. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. He doesn't do endings all that well. I think I think Spaceballs probably has one of the better endings. Yeah. Because in I'm trying to think of movies that he did that has an actual good ending to it. Robin Hood Men and Tights. Yeah, I think that one has a pretty good ending. Well, even then, it kind of. I mean, but he does break. The, at some point, he 
breaks he starts he likes to pull out scripts he always wants to remind you that it's a movie yeah so he'll pull out a script or he'll have him walk off stage or he'll reference the directors oh he'll, yeah he'll reference a movie like when dave Chappelle becomes the sheriff at the end of the movie like okay. worked in blazing Work saddles yeah i still like that movie a lot that's funny because i still i when somebody says robin hood i still think of carrie ellis first before any other actor yeah me too that's yeah that's because unlike other robin hoods i actually have a british accent and it's true. And he should have been an actual Robin Hood, to be honest. Yeah. But, yeah, I He'd fucking love Carrie Lewis. Oh, yeah, it's either that or the fox is my first thought when I think of oh, Robin yeah. Hood. This, yes. Yeah. It's one or the other. But Well, now you can uh, watch that new Robin Hood movie and maybe that guy. That might become... as well just be an Elseworlds of the Green Arrow every time I watch a commercial <laughs> for it. I was like, why isn't this just a Green Arrow Elseworlds? That's all this is. Like, he's doing, like, backflips and shit and, like, crazy shit. I don't know. They all have modern-looking clothing. They yeah. do! That's what bothers me, is that I thought it was modern. Or, like, a like weird, not-too-distant future... Post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic thing. Because it's, like, modern clothes, but then they have, like, not-so-modern technology and whatever. I saw, like, a gif of him actually, like, using a bow, like, super badassly. I'm like, why did they even pay you to do that because this all looks cgi yeah, anyways it just yeah he could have just not had anything in his hand yeah. it's just like pew pew arrows and jamie fox doing a really bad british accent <laughs> i just i don't understand it's a, I want, it's a weird thing i want it to be good i just want a good robin hood movie it's i don't know if favorites. it's ever gonna happen unless it's a fox i mean again. i've already seen it <laughs> unless it's a fox again <laughs> yeah unless it, <laughs> bring back the fox bring back some make it a 3d one this time i'll watch it again don't even change the dialogue. Just use the audio from it and just make it. <laughs> you can't change it. Those, the music in that is perfect. Exactly. That just whistle song is the just best. like uh, HD it. Like make it like a like a PS4 HD re-release <laughs> of a movie where they they're like we reanimated everything. Well, now the fox is fur is super touchy, like or whatever. Uh, Something weird it looks like just that. Just like Zootopia now. Exactly. Oh yeah, huh? Zootopia's Robin Hood. That was that was a weird fan thing that i thought was funny was the idea that um uh what's his name the i almost said michael <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, you you're michael what the fuck is his name oh i don't know I, the fox yeah I I, the fox's name um but that like the fact the idea that like his maybe he like maybe his grandparents are like straight up robin <laughs> oh he made marion that'd be cool yeah. like people were like making like like fan art of like him on the phone I'm like no grandma like I'm not dating the rabbit. <laughs> it like cuts to like May, like uh, May Marion on the phone with him, and and then Robin Hood in the background going, "Ask him about her." <laughs> I was like, "That's kind of adorable." <laughs> yeah, I kind of I live for that. I just always, you know, I I know a lot of people were even assuming that it was a Jungle Book tailspin kind of thing. Yeah, as it, soon as you. <clears throat> yeah, that was the weird thing about tailspin. Oh yeah. Was that for some reason, this uh this bear that was raising basically a savage child now has an airplane <laughs> and well, I mean, you gotta the guy that was trying to kill that savage child is now lex Luthor. yeah and i'm like i'm cool with this <laughs> that yeah, was I mean, the best was thing as a it. kid you were just cool with weird shit like that yeah like i, I don't i yeah i know the mighty ducks is just a bunch of kids but there's a cartoon about a, oh a God, duck goalie with super buff muscles and the hockey <laughs> the hockey ring would open up and that's where they would keep all their stuff and, it, and yeah it but it was like called the, the mighty ducks and you're like how does this have anything to do with that movie Dude, i was so into that but you're it, cool with it. Both well, of those things. that one was less to do with the movie and that they went okay we have the rights to the name we're gonna actually have a hockey team called the mighty ducks uh let's get a cartoon to help promote that well that's the best part of it though is that like you, they would get names for things yeah and just do weird shit with it yeah like what was that sherlock holmes in the 30 something century or some shit Something like that. Yeah. Oh. Like they just, they were like, let's just grab this thing that people know and just do something fucking weird with it. And it was funny because they even did that with Spider Man after Spider Man the Anime Series ended. They're like, oh, let's yes. make a one where Spider-Man. he goes to a different Earth. And well, because animals. Well, and that one was because uh, Batman Beyond was doing really good. So they yeah. were like, well, we have this comic called Spider Man 2099. And they were like, but if we do that, then it'll feel like we're copying Batman. Um, well, screw it. Let's make it Peter Parker and that he goes to this other earth that's in direct rotation around the sun, opposite rotation around the sun. So we've never seen it before. And that earth has an exact similar history, except there's like animal, people. animal people. And, and basically it's the, that world is the 2099 world from the comics, except we're just going to, you know, it's going to be Peter Parker. 
And what I find really funny about that show is that I have it on DVD. Before Spectacular Spider-Man, it was the only other Spider-Man show where they gave him web wings for like a little bit. Yeah, yeah. He has web wings in the very beginning. They changed the voice actor too. He went from uh, Christopher Daniel Barnes to Reno Romano, who does it for the PS1 games. Yeah. Who I also like a lot because they're both very similar. Um, but yeah, they did a lot of fun shit with that. And it's funny because I didn't see the actual final episode of that show until it was on Netflix. Because oh, I didn't even um, know it got on Netflix. Yeah, it was on Netflix for a little bit. I don't think it's there anymore. But um, but what happened was that the, the day of the final episode, my mom turned the TV off and was like, you got to clean your room. And I'm like... No. But it's like the final like episode of the season because I didn't and it was canceled at that point. It's like I just need to see it. She's like I don't care. You need like and this is before you could watch anything on the internet. Yeah, you can't just go I get it. I didn't see the final episode for like ten years <laughs> or ten twenty years. Imagine how clean his room got. And I, it was really clean, and clean. then I was really mad. <laughs> I was really mad because I was like, "How does it end?" <laughs> and then when I found out how it ends, I'm like, "Well, that's a cliffhanger, so that's even worse." Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it's it's uh, like the Silver Surfer cartoon. Yeah. Uh, which, if you've never seen, it's fucking great. Like, it's probably one of the best cartoons out there. Like, it is oh. pure Jack Kirby awesomeness um, in in animated form. Um, it ends on the it's either the biggest downer ending or the biggest cliffhanger ending in ever in, ever in existence. How Even more end? than Alf. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know Alf's ending, right? Yeah, I do. That's a Alf's super ending. depressing ending when you think about it. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 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 similar to that. But yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, fuck it, I'll spoil. It. I don't care. I don't think yeah, anyone's gonna watch it. <laughs> um, Thanos we can spoil unmakes Alf as well. Uh, Santa, Thanos uh, unmakes all of existence. That's oh, where wow. the episode ends. That's amazing. Perfect. Because they got canceled and still actually were sp- still supposed to have like two more episodes after oh, okay. that. So the idea was that Thanos would unmake existence and then the next episode was uh, Silver Surfer rema- you know, figuring out a way to get existence to be remade. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it was, but there's like, the, I think the creators actually put the script for the last two episodes online because they were like, they were so pissed off they didn't get the last two episodes. Oh, okay. That happened to a lot of shows like that. Especially on Fox. Spider-Man the Animated Series, they had an idea for a final... Actually, it's funny. I found all this out on accident. I was going to the ACC, and they had me... I was writing a paper. I don't even remember what it was for. But I decided to do it on Spider-Man, because, of course, I'm a giant Spider-Man nerd. <laughs> I found a book like in, one of, in a library somewhere in Austin. I don't even remember the name of the book. But it had interviews with the writer for the animated series and the one for unlimited mm-hmm. and the guy from the animated series he was like it was like herding cats to get to keep the network from like realizing what i was doing because what it was is that he used the like it turns out this dude was the reason why it follows the comic book continuity so well because he's like i wanted to make a show that was just like the comic book yeah. and i had to trick them all the time <laughs> he's like he's like one of my favorite stories that he mentions is that he um you remember like very early on it has the spider slayers yeah yeah He's like, the way I convinced him to let me do that as a multi-part episode was because I was like, look, think of the toys we can make on these spider slayers kind of thing. Jesus. He just kept throwing merchandise shit at yeah. them just so he can get a story to be made. Uh, like, like with Venom, he's like, well, think about the merchandise we can make with, you know, having multiple stuff with this. He's like, I did that for like so long. <laughs> he's like, we were beating Batman in rating sometimes because of it, like yeah. shit like that. And he's like, and then, you know, they decided to cancel it to make Spider-Man Unlimited. And I was the only one they didn't bring on a board, and we know how that turned out. <laughs> that is what he said. And when they talked to the unlimited guy, like he talked shit about the other guy. <laughs> and he was, but they he talks about what he wanted to do for the second season of Unlimited. He's like, yeah, we were gonna set it to where you know everything gets taken care of. He then he starts doing more Spider Man, like saving people thing. And then he was gonna find his way back to Earth or something, and then we're gonna do it from there. Is what they said. Like they had, like everyone had these plans. Like when they talk. When the guy talks about what he want to do with Spider-Man, the animated series, like, we're, we're, we're going to do, like, almost like a time travel thing, figure out where Mary Jane went. We were going to make Cletus Cassidy, Jack the Ripper kind of thing, like, shit like that. Like, and then we got canceled. That would have been then. fun. Just, like, Spider-Man through time. Yeah, he wanted to have fun with it, and he just, they, yeah, that they, they canceled him. That leads you into the Spider-Verse stuff, really. Yeah, it would have, yeah, he basically, he basically accidentally did the Spider-Verse before Spider-Verse yeah. was a thing, which I thought was kind of funny. Because they had these alternate timeline spider man helping each other. Just got to get Spider-Ham. Yeah, Spider-Ham. He's all the rage now. Yeah. Which is fun. He's like, my time is now! <laughs> yeah, John Mulaney is going to be Spider-Ham. 
in the new movie, which I think is pretty bad. Oh, it's yeah. pretty yeah. bad actually. It's a pretty good choice. It's a great choice actually. I'm I'm glad the Spider Verse is a thing, uh, because it lets more Spider Men be further into the spotlight. Yeah. yeah. Like Noir, twenty ninety nine, Ultimate, Miles, uh, Spider Gwen is a great great idea still. She's a good idea, but I didn't like the book. And I thought people were just so in love with, enamored with her design that they didn't get, I didn't get a good Spider Girl or a Spider Gwen out of it. Like, I wanted. Spider Woman is one of my favorite characters. And then when you give me Spider Gwen, (laughs) and then it's just kind of like, oh, but like if Gwen Stacy was like this punk chick that had the powers and not Peter Parker, and it's just like. All right, all right, I guess. My but... issue, my issue with it was that they didn't know what they were doing with it as time went on. Yeah. Because they just started like randomly throwing people into it. They're like Punisher is a cop, I guess. Yeah. They... And Wolverine's a bounty hunter. Yeah. Or something. I'm like, okay. And then they did the ben- I don't know. The way it ended was like really frustrating for me. Yeah, I um, just wasn't into it. Now she, now she, now her costume straight up is a symbiote. So that's interesting. I oh, guess. Yeah. I don't know. It's fucking weird. <laughs> I like. Uh, now she's Ghost Spider. Yeah. Which is also a terrible name, but it's I don't know what else I would call her. Name. Well, I mean, they can't really call her Spider Gwen. Yeah, but like Ghost Spider is still a really bad name. <laughs> oh, I yeah, know. It doesn't make it better. Silk, She's like a ghost. Silk like, so far has been my favorite uh, spider character name. They need name. to use like, more of her, her still. Yeah, man, her book was great. And then it just kind of, I don't know. She kind of just, just sort of fizzled out. Yeah, they did that a lot. The, one of the only good things that come out of Original Sin, I think, in my opinion, still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, no. But back to the horror topic. Yeah, Spi- we spiders keep, are scary. We're we keep, very good at, at sidetracking. Okay. That's oh, no, my no, fault, no. though. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> Trust me. Last week we were supposed to be talking about returns and Fantastic Four and st- and like other like big return like good returns when stuff like came back after a long period of time. I think we talked about Fantastic Four for all of like ten minutes, but talked about the MCU. Uh, movies for like 45 minutes straight nice. well let's so. let's let's talk about something great that came out again recently which is uh castlevania i and actually netflix. haven't seen the second season yet it's it's i like it a lot it's real fun although i think it i think it focuses more on ali card than i would have liked than than trevor yeah um, which isn't necessary i was kind of worried that something like that was going to happen the uh, other issue when... i have with it is that they don't call any of the whips the vampire killer the entire time. Oh. Like, they're just like, you have a Morningstar whip. And I'm like, are you guys not going <laughs> to Is nobody going to call it? Is no one going to say it? No one going to say it? I'll say it. It's like, I'll, like, like, they mentioned Leon Beaumont. There's even a picture of Leon. I'm like, why don't you guys mention all the cool shit that goes on with Leon and Dracula and their history together? I guess no one's going to. Okay, sure. No, no, <laughs> sure. It was very frustrating. Like as a, as a huge Castlevania nerd, because I I'm I'm a big big Castlevania fan, um, but I'm also like one of the I'm I'm a Belmont guy. Everyone's like Symphony of the Night. And I'm like I, I'm I I get it, but I'm not an alley card man myself. <laughs> Whenever I hear anybody talk about Castlevania, I just think about the Star Bomb song. Oh That's, yeah, Crashervania is one of my favorite songs. Period. <laughs> it's so funny. I just put it on my Halloween playlist. I I've been trying to show that song to as many people as possible because somebody was like, "What's a good Halloween song?" It's a Crashervania <laughs> right now because it's, it's perfect, the greatest. It's like the answer to the Monster Mash. It's the greatest like idea of a song I've ever heard yeah. in my life. Which is, what if the Monster Mash happened, but then Simon Beaumont showed up? <laughs> yeah, I just like that it ends. With, it looks like I have <laughs> one at Twister. Twister. I love that because he's just like white foot and green, and he stabs. Yeah. Or something, <laughs> and he's like, "Whoops, force of habit." <laughs> that it's the way he sings his intros every yeah. time. Tis I. <laughs> that was my ringtone for like a year. Um, it was it was him like the very first one, and I always like I listen to it constantly whenever I get a chance. In fact, when Rondo of Blood, because they re-released Rondo of Blood and um, Symphony of Night recently, in the middle of it, I start I started playing Crashervania. Yeah. While I was playing the game, because my I have a Google Home and I have the song attached to it, I was like, "Google, I want you to play me Crashervania." Was, I just did that for like <laughs> Never a little while. Never stop playing. <laughs> Never stop playing Crashervania. That was my favorite song from Starbomb. But yeah, that was yeah. I think it was my favorite. I was funny. I was talking to I was talking to Jeff about the Lord of Shadow series because he tried bringing he accidentally made me start talking about the different timelines thing. 
Because he was just like, yeah, you know, what about the Belmont that's Dracula? I was like, well, then you're going into the other timeline. He's like, I already regret this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going in a path I cannot follow. That, that, that's uh, him with most uh, conversations. Is, yeah, uh, he as, as soon as you know more than he does, it's he doesn't want any more. <laughs> well, it's because the, the difference between more, knowing more than he does with normal people is that you'll stop eventually very quickly. Yeah. But with us... We will go yeah, forever until going. you push the stop button. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so he knows now that, like, his hand is, like, he's basically, like, if you played Spider-Man, that part where he's got his hand above the stop button. <laughs> he's, yeah. like, waiting. Like, that's Jeff with us every time he talks to us, like, waiting to be like, stop, stop. <laughs> but, uh... Castlevania's good, though. Rondo of Blood still plays really well, though. If you, if anyone has a PS4 and wants yeah, to play... It's... Symphony of the Night and Round of the Blood. I've still um, got my uh, Symphony of the Night because it's backwards compatible on the Xbox One, so I've still got it on there. But oh, okay. I started playing it a while back. Is it I, the... Um, because the one that It was the Xbox Live Arcade. Yeah, because the one that's on... Um, for the 360. On the re-release is the new translation one. Oh, okay. That they had on the PSP. So it doesn't have Die, You Monster, You Don't Belong in This World. Aw. has the actual, like, normal sentence for it. That's the only bummer, is that it has no bad voice acting in it. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, when they re-released it for the PSP for the Rondo Blood remake, which I wish came with it, but it doesn't. Um, yeah, they, they redid everything for Symphony of the Night. So it's the same, but different. Cause you, so the one you have is still the original PS1 one, yeah. technically. So you still have all the really bad voice acting. All the best. Which makes the best. like Because you don't get... What is a man but a miserable pile of secrets? Like, you get the actual, like, like fucking Shakespearean way of him saying it, and you're like, oh, kind of <laughs> wanted you to say it badly. <laughs> yep. But having Rondo of Blood's great, because I completely forgot the intro sequence. Is it completely in German? Because I guess they, they did it as, like, an, as an aesthetic choice to be, mm-hmm. like, it's an ancient, like, tale kind of thing. Yeah. So the entire thing is spoken in German. So, like, at one point, they were a flutter mouse, like, so they're talking about bats, and I was just like, uh, <laughs> that's adorable. But then after that, it's all in English. So some of our listeners may notice a weird jump cut. That's because my recording equipment stopped recording, and I apologize Maybe about that. Maybe it was that. a ghost. Maybe it was winds. a ghost. Spooky. <laughs> if solar winds is an alien. Oh, no. Uh, solar winds is my go-to because of Family Guy, when uh, they catch Neil Armstrong going outside of the movie studio or whatever. I thought you were on the moon. Well, you know, um, solar winds, and then he just knocks the dude out. (laughs) I always think of that when somebody asks me, what went wrong? Uh, Solar winds? It's almost reasonable. (laughs) Always my first thought. (laughs) Works. It works. But, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, unfortunately, like I said, unfortunately, I haven't watched season two of of, uh, Castlevania. It's good, though. It's... um, it's, it's got a lot of exposition in the first chunk of yeah. it because they introduce even more characters and then okay. they're like, who are these people and here are their motivations and here's this dude and here's his motivation. I'm like, okay, I didn't need to know half of this, but okay. But it's, I'm still fine with it because they were interesting enough. Uh, but overall, I liked it still a lot and they they leave it a little more open-ended for even more stuff, so. Do we know if they're getting another season? They probably will. I hope so because yeah. it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, they, they're pretty creative with some of the stuff. Plus they play Bloody Tears in one of the episodes, so that's pretty fucking cool. Nice. Um, it's good though. I liked it a lot. Trevor is, is a good Belmont. Not my favorite Belmont, but a good Belmont. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, speaking of Netflix, uh, horror, uh, Haunting of Hill House was pretty good. Yeah, The Haunting of, uh, have you watched that? Oh, you should, dude. It's really good. everyone I know, including my family, uh, recently, because I went to my niece's birthday, or no, my nephew's birthday, and everyone wanted to talk to me about it, and I was like, I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah. So true blue horror fans don't believe the hype, because there's this weird horror movies do this a lot, where they'll be like, people were passing out in the theater, and then like, if you're a regular horror watcher and you go watch whatever movie they're talking about, and you're like, I mean, yeah, there's like a scary jump scare or whatever. Paranormal like, Activity was really bad about that. Yeah, and I it, literally fell asleep in the theater during Paranormal Activity because I was already tired. It's, it, it, I hate the Paranormal Activity movies. I don't think they're particularly scary. But the first one I can get because it's one of those things where it, it, it plays on the fear of like, you're alone in the middle of the night and then something, you hear something. I like quiet, spooky stuff happening. So sometimes you would get the like, 
you're in the kitchen and something's moving in a different room. But it was after like 10 attention. minutes of like nothing. Yeah. Was the issue I it's, had with it's, it. there, it's barely like a plot. <laughs> I was visiting a friend in San Antonio when, when I went to watch it. And I was already tired from the drive. And so in the middle of paranormal activity, he said I passed out and started snoring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even notice. Well, yeah. Uh, but the haunting of Hill House. House, the advertisement shows people's... Um, like the big advertisement that they've been posting show people like tweeting about it mm-hmm. and people are like oh, i peed my pants i pooped myself i don't know why they love these but and then people are like oh i passed out oh i've been having nightmares every night and blah 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 so like horror fans are going in expecting the scariest thing in the world but if you've seen the conjuring or insidious you're gonna get something on par with that as far oh, okay. as horror but a really good lengthy it's a good story story yeah Yeah. about this family and them dealing with something like living in a haunted house for a while and like the weird implications of what that means for them because you jump between them being kids in that haunted house and then them as adults having gotten out of that yeah okay um but i think it's really good like i i really enjoy as a story it's a really good story but when people are like, it's the scariest thing. Like, it's so scary. I just, I don't trust anybody when they say yeah. that shit. Yeah, it's it's definitely got some like some really good scares in it. Like, some actual, like, oh, creepy yeah. things that are going on in it. Um, it's definitely got a lot of really good stuff. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's stuff that... You... Any horror fan would know. It's yeah. like a, go- a haunted house story. If you're like, and then in the haunted house, they heard knocking on the walls and... Yeah, it's a haunted house story. Of course they were knocking on the walls. Is it done in a really nice, like, cinematic way? Yes. Yeah. But is it new horror? No. Like, they didn't do anything yeah. new. They didn't if anything, write the book. The, the one thing that a lot of people, the one episode, without actually talking about what's going on in the episode. There's like five or something. Right? Uh, five that or everyone talks about is there's an episode where it's a series of long shots. Oh, yeah, I heard about that one. But they're transitioning between scenes in one take, almost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really well done. And even if it's not really, even if it's just digitally edited in a way that it looks like it's one shot, but it's not actually one shot because I don't know if it actually is or not. It's, tough. Um, it's yeah. done in a way that is seamless and is really, really good. That's what I like Birdman so much is that they did a really good job of making it seem like that. Yeah. If you've ever seen that one. Like there's a, there's a, what is it? I love uh, that movie. Jim Car- there's the Jim Carrey, the TV show he does right now, where he's kind of oh, like the Mr. Rogers type yeah, character. Um, yeah. I saw that clip of yeah. like, how they did that yeah, one Yeah, there's part. this one scene where it's literally... It's like a montage of a girl watching his... Because sh- he's, yeah, he's like and, Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's like transitioning in her life between like being this like down and out person into being somebody that's like putting her life together. And they and how- show how it's just all like one shot. So she like walks off screen and then there's literally a crew of people like bring in a new couch so it looks like a new bedroom or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like, you put a new shirt on her or something in yeah. the middle of it. Well, it's like, like one fuck. point they, they, they literally have, like, a different person playing that character so that the other character can, so that the actual yeah. actress can be... Yeah. Um, it's just, like, a back shot. Yeah. So they can, like, have her getting ready for something else. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that is super fucking cool because that must have taken a lot of work. And it's not necessary. Like, you don't have to do it that way. They yeah. could have easily just, like did it all digitally yeah and... you pick a spot and you edit from that spot when she walks off screen you cut and then change it and then come back but instead they chose to do it as one fluid motion it's magical to watch yeah it's so it's great so it's like amazing. the yeah. beauty of filmmaking and uh you get that with that scene in um it, or that that episode. entire episode yeah it's has like multiple it's almost scenes. dead center so like there's yeah. 10 episodes and yeah. I think it's, yeah, like episode five or six. Yeah, everyone's mentions five or six, I think, is that time frame. Yeah, it's somewhere right in the middle, and it's just great. I mean, the whole, uh, I, I honestly think the first two episodes are probably the weakest ones, even though they're, they lean heavier into the horror. Um, the longer you make a horror story, the less scary it gets. Or the longer you make a ghost story, the less scary it gets. So by the end, I don't feel like it's scary. You're not like, huh, oh no, what's happening kind of thing, but... Um, the first few episodes are scarier, but the characters are less likable because you're just learning about those characters. Oh, okay. So they're kind of acting like assholes and you're like, fuck what I care about these dicks. But then like the further along you get, you go, oh, okay, this is why they're being this way. Uh, so I think anyone that's watching it needs to get past the first two episodes. Yeah. That's what happened to my brother, Sam. He, um, 
Yeah, because he had stopped it, but then my sister-in-law convinced him to keep going. And then, yeah, he's like, it's the best kind yeah. of thing. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it's still just, plan on it, but there's so many goddamn things out right oh now. Oh my god! Like, yeah, there's, there's what, what is it? The other show that we we binge watched on Netflix, uh, the mis- uh, the Curious Creations of uh, Christine McConnell. Yeah, yeah, and I haven't even seen this third season of Daredevil yet. Yeah, and people are saying it's oh, really I, good. I, I haven't watched it. Iron Fist season two, even though it's canceled. Either. I haven't seen What's Luke the Cage point? season two, which is canceled. <laughs> What's the point? I haven't even seen Punisher. Um, That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> The Punisher, the problem with that, yeah, the Punisher was just like, there's a whole lot of not being Punisher going on in this Punisher show. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, no, I'm so behind. But yeah, the, the Curious Creations of Christine Christy McConnell, McConnell. Uh, is a fun little, uh, it's kind of like a, I'm trying to think of a, like a almost a way to describe it. Um, it's like Martha Stewart living if Martha Stewart was Elvira. Oh, that um, sounds awesome. So Christy McConnell is somebody that's, uh, she's like a baker. She's also, she's seamstress. like a food artist, basically. Yeah. She's a seamstress. She's just a, in general, like crafty person. So she has all these books and this is all like real life. And so they just gave her this show where she has a mansion that looks like a haunted house. And she has these creatures that like live with her. That's like a raccoon that was smashed in a, garbage truck that she brought back to life and a sphinx that was uh, worshipped in Egypt in ancient Egypt times that was brought back to life I guess. Well she she found uh, she went to a like a like just like an old oh, shop. She, yeah uh, she read an incantation that and brought him back. And read an incantation that was packaged with him oh, and it okay. brought him back to life but he's and, like a mummified cat. And, uh, oh, and like a werewolf that's just a wolf. So it's more like a, yeah. do- a dog man, kind of. Like, he's still a werewolf, but he's just not... He never, like, turns into a guy. Oh, okay. And uh, they're all... All of the creatures are Jim Henson Studio puppets. Oh, okay. I think I know what you're talking and about. And so it. throughout it, she just cr- makes, like, cookies that look like tarantulas. And she makes, like, a haunted house, gingerbread house. And she, like, makes candles, but she carves spooky faces in them and stuff. So and- it's kind of Martha Stewarty, kind of... Uh, There's also like entertainment because there is a story and a moral going on. In oh, it. okay. Um, Dita Von Teese, the yeah. burlesque performer, is like a ghost that lives in her house or like in the mirrors in her house, yeah. and she has uh, relatives that come in and show up. And yeah, it's it's cute and weird, and it's only six episodes long, and yeah. they're only thirty minute episodes oh, okay. in there. So it's just kind of like a fun little. I I want to say family friendly, but there's a lot of weird jokes the raccoon's a very horny raccoon <laughs> she likes a gnome in the neighbor's yard it yeah. can go either way sometimes with those i watched a lot of dragon ball and i had master roshi's pervertedness did not yeah, register with me for yeah, a long time i don't know if she would <laughs> register as like i don't know if kids would catch it yeah but uh yeah i love it but i you know it's horror mixed with jim henson so of course i'm gonna love it there's so many things out right now that are halloween themed that i really want to watch like the new sabrina story. i haven't even seen it i yet. haven't even seen it and everyone's episode like it it's good and i'm like cool i can't watch it I'm like yeah, that's awesome i've been waiting forever but you know red dead came out and i need to finish fist of the north star uh, the game, I need to finish, fuck it, I need to finish so many goddamn games. Yeah, it's like I finished the the Spider-Man uh, DLC, DLC. The, like on, on yeah. the day it came out, like or the day after it came out, because I was like, I need to beat this because Red Dead's about to come out. I started to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey and then was like, no, I'm not going to play this anymore because uh, I didn't like it. Um, yeah, everyone told me. Basically, I, everyone told me not to play it. It's, I mean, I'm sure it's a good game because I hear a lot of good things about it. But my problem with both this and Origins is that they throw way too much at you all at once. And it's kind of boring for the first part of it because it's expecting you to learn to play the game. Oh, it's just like it's one of those things where it's, it feels like a long tutorial. Yeah, and it's supposed to and be. just it just feels boring, and so I was like, eh, you know what, I'm not gonna play this. If anything, I will say the Spartan Kick is actually really satisfying. Uh, they have a move that's essentially the "This is Sparta" Spartan Kick yeah. to the chest. It was like the first thing um, I ever showed about it. I, I kicked a tiger in the face. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that kid, that does sound pretty rad. Uh, it that's was, all I uh, really need. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah, so it's like I played that. I. I got Soul Calibur, which I really want to play, but I haven't played because Red Dead came out. Yeah, that's true. Um, I just started My Hero Academia as well. Oh, uh, yeah, I we got, we got the first so season. Mm. Yeah. It's on Hulu. I just ended yeah. up watching. 
I, I, I'm like in the middle of the second season somewhere. Yeah, that's that's good because uh, the service I was watching it on, Verve, uh, is about to lose it and a bunch of other stuff. So, uh, cause, oh, are they are. So Verve, for anyone who doesn't know, is just VRV uh, is mm. the name of it. Is yeah. the streaming service from Crunchyroll. Uh, they started a streaming service that has. Was it on Funimation too? Then? Well, it was. It was a joint. It was kind of a joint thing, but it was. It was a service provided by Crunchyroll, and it had. Mm-hmm. On it, it has Crunchyroll, Funimation, uh, all of the Nerdist premium like subscriber content, all of Geek and Sundry subscriber content, all of Rooster Teeth subscriber content, plus Shutter and oh, okay. uh, some other services. And uh, last year, uh, Funimation got bought by Sony. Sony, I think. If I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah if I remember correctly. And Sony basically said, "Why are you Why are you playing nice with this with this competitor?" Um, when the contract is up, get the fuck off that service and, and only focus on your own. And so they had to end the contract with with uh, Crunchyroll so that Verve is losing uh, oh, Funimation. Okay. So it's also that. losing all of those con- those shows. Funimation's app is not the best. Like the actual um, app. I, oh, I, I had it for a little bit and I'm like, this is not great. Because I was watching Dragon Ball stuff with that. So. Yeah. But... Uh, but yeah, so you know that that sucks. That's a shame. It is. That's your little news piece for the day. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's yeah. That's, it's got news in it. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about new the something newsies. newsy a little bit. <laughs> it's got that newsies in. Yeah. It's got Christian Bale in it. it and stuff. It's <laughs> what's even funnier is like uh, Crunchyroll's trying to spin. It's like yeah, we lost Funimation, but we got Sentai Filmworks. You want to watch Kill a Kill, right? <laughs> and this other show that because Sentai Filmworks is a animation studio that I think was started up. I know, it's, I, th- I know it's a local Texas thing, but I want to oh, say, yeah. I think it was started up from the, the ashes of ADV Films. Oh, okay. Um, that makes sense. And so they're, they also do have, like, right... Like, they don't have, like, a lot of high-profile stuff, but, like, they do have, like, a few shows that are, are wildly popular. Um, so it's kind of like, yay? <laughs> we get the, you know... Yeah, it's a shame that Funimation has accidentally turned into a weird monopoly. Well, it also sucks because uh, Crunchyroll got bought by AT and T, and oh. apparently that's also part of it. Is that Sony wants no nothing to do with AT and T? Oh, that explains a lot, actually. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of one of those things where both companies got bought by other companies, but AT and T is like, you be you and do whatever you want. We just don't care. Just make us money. <laughs> Whereas Sony's like, no, no, you can't play nice with them. Ooh, the horror Ooh. of business mergers. Yeah, that's the horror of being an anime <laughs> fan. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, it is. Well, it's just like it was nice because you could go to one place and you get all this, you get all no. the anime you would want in for one subscription. Now I have to have like three subscriptions to get everything. That's and a pain. Yeah, it's, it's impossible to be a good a good legal anime fan. Yeah. I mean, I I do mean that as as in like. Not oh no no! When this as many when this got announced, if you actually look at any of the comments of any of the news sites that actually talked about it, there were a lot of people like, "Well, back to piracy." Yeah, basically. Let me put my eye patch back on because I'm not paying for multiple streaming services. Like uh, that's what yeah. Most of us were just watching stuff like that, and you know that's a that's a shame. Yeah, yeah. this just makes it more difficult. But, but yeah, it's a good thing I already finished Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I was, I was, I was like, oh god, I think it, I think it leaves Verve service on November fourth. So I'm like, what Funimation shows do I need to watch as quickly as possible? God damn, you're just gonna barrel through them. <laughs> well, what sucks is one of them. I think they stopped updating because of the fact that they're le- they're like, why bother? Which one was that? One? Uh, it was a show that I kind of picked up called Double Decker. Oh. Um, or I just started watching. It's only yeah. like three episodes in, but like the third episode came out like two weeks ago and it was one of those day day of oh, releases yeah. so I'm just like so our new episodes not airing or is this uh that they just stop updating on uh could Crunchy go World? either way yeah. that's the thing about anime yeah sometimes they're like oh this is an anime that I think I might like oh and it's done <laughs> yeah. but uh but yeah no it's uh but yeah can't oh. be any uh, good uh like good Horror comics to read or reread. I liked Dylan Dog a lot. The actual oh. comic. Oh yeah, yeah. Dylan Dog Dark. was really good. Yeah. When they when they came out with the that really weird Brandon Routh film. I they, like that film though. It's not a bad film. It's just not. It's not really Dylan, Dylan Dog at all. No, it's yeah. not. Like because they they re they released this like giant 
thick book. Yeah. With a cover made by Mike. I can't ever say his last name. Magnola. Magnola. Yeah. Magnola. He made a cover for it and everything. Yeah. And I, I bought this big old. I don't have it anymore, but I bought this big old thick book. Had a bunch of translated Dylan dogs in it, and I was like, "This is fucking awesome." <laughs> yeah, I know the big thing is that they couldn't use Groucho Marx. Yeah, because yeah, his partner is a Groucho Marx impersonator. Yeah, and apparently the Groucho Marx estate was like, "We we approved it for the comic, but we will not approve it for your movie." I'm okay with that though. I don't. Yeah. Would it have translated in the movie? <laughs> I, that's though? the thing. Like... Is I don't know if it would translate that well. Yeah. Like, it's just it's not really a thing that people yeah. get even now. Yeah. Like, I get Groucho Marx purely because of Bugs Bunny half the time. Yeah. And then, you know, I eventually saw his actual stuff. But, yeah, in the comics, it's really interesting to see this, like, Groucho Marx yeah. literally in person, <laughs> like, hanging out with this yeah. detective of, like, horrific shit. But, I think they could do it, but it wouldn't be Groucho Marx. Like, it just need to be a different kind of, an impersonator, but just not Groucho. Groucho, specifically. Yeah. yeah. It would have to probably be someone more, like, modern or something. I wish I could actually read the rest of Dylan Dog because it's really hard to find anything else. Translated. Yeah, that book went out of print very quick. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Um, um, and and then, even if I try finding it online, it's all the Italians, Italian versions of it. It's like fuck. And I think it's still being made now. Oh, is it something like that? If I remember correctly, probably. If not, it wasn't too long ago. I can't remember. But there's a lot of them, and it's like fuck. None of these are translated or almost. There's like I just really want to read these because they're all really good. Um, I hear Nail Biter is really good. Yeah, I, I've yeah, got we, the first uh, hardcover, uh, and yeah. I think we got like we we bought up to like I want to say the fifth soft cover, and then I bought the hardcover and stopped buying the soft covers because I was just gonna buy the hardcovers as they came out. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then never got around to it. Oh, okay. Sometimes that did happens. Too, so yeah. But yeah, No Biter was really good. I heard really good um, things about that one. Uh, I'm currently reading Junji Ito's uh, take on Frankenstein. Junji Ito is a fucking crazy person. Yeah, man, this Frankenstein is horrifying. Looking yeah, and this is it. the first time it's been translated into English. Really? This yeah. book, because um, he wrote this, it just he came did this out, uh, what, two weeks ago. Yeah, it just came out. This, this, and it's a Check the hardcover out, is like half. Check out that Frankenstein though. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely something he'd draw. Right, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. His it's like the art first so half of monstrous. it is actually the Frankenstein book. Yeah, and then and there's then... like six uh, short stories in the back. Yeah. Is any of them uh, the balloon one? I oh, I don't, I don't know what. Stories. Okay, so okay, this happened to me recently because I, I went on a podcast. It was one of the one of us dot nets um, thing, mm -hmm. and they were all talking about horror stuff, and I forgot to bring up Junji Ito in it. But what happened was right after it was done, I remembered him, and I just started. I, I looked it up because I was I was decided to look up my favorite of his stories. Yeah, that I, that I it was the one that made me discover who he was. Yeah, which is it was like um it was like the the mystery of like it's of some mountain or something because there's like people shaped holes in the mountains. Yeah, and it's like super fucked up the way it like progresses. But what happened was that a lot of people put these on Imager. Yeah, they did, and they put links to a bunch of his other stories in it. And I spent an hour just going through these at one in the morning. And then as soon as I got home, I was like, I have made a horrible mistake. Yeah. Because <laughs> I yeah. cannot go to sleep now because I am too freaked out. <laughs> but one of them is this really fucked up story about, um, I don't know if it's in there or not because I don't want to ruin it. No. It's not I don't, in there? Uh, what was that one called that you're talking about? Uh, I don't even remember the name of it, but it's, um, it's, it's about, it's like, it's, if I explain it, like it. Kind of let me just let me see it real quick. Okay. Well, gonna, this is the table of contents. Yeah, you need to see I, the name of the, see the short stories. Uh, so. I don't think it's any of these. Yeah. Okay, then. Oh, well, actually, let me let me be sure about one eighty seven here. <laughs> to be sure, because the this specific story is like really amazing, but also like really fucked up. Did you ever watch the um the anime? The anime sure, that they this. did like the I forget what it was. I was thinking it was just stories by Junji Ito or yeah. I I didn't, but I wanted to. I watched the first... Uh, three episodes? Yeah, we watched the first three episodes. I feel like, as strange as this is going to sound, uh, his comics being ad adapted into like full motion aren't as scary. Actually, uh, a lot of my favorite ones, no, they're not in here, actually. But uh, Because the one that I was thinking of, what it is, is that uh, a very popular idol kills yourself, or whatever, mm -hmm. and like her head popped out, popped off or something. But what happens is that people start seeing like her a giant version of her head floating around, and um, like her boy, her ex boyfriend, or her or something, like was freaking out trying to talk to it, 
and then he gets he gets like hung from he gets hung from a, a giant one as well and it, then his head becomes a giant thing too huh but then as it progresses you find out what's actually happening is that she didn't actually kill herself it's just for some reason there are these giant versions of people's heads with like this metal rope hanging off of it yeah that finds the person that they look like and then hang them yeah for like no reason basically yeah. but if you attack it your head takes the damage that it takes so you can't just shoot it down and yeah because then you just be like shooting yourself. and so the entire story the rest of the story is like people like freaking out about the fact that they can't go outside and these things talk and everything yeah so they're like they taunt the people and it's really fucked up, but the fun. But there's one part that's really funny because it makes no sense. Because mm-hmm. what happens is that after they find out that these that there's a bunch of them, like the dad's like, "I gotta go to work," and they're like, "Why? Why? Why are you going to work right now?" He's like, "Well, if I just go like this," like he puts his hands in front of himself, yeah. like they can't get me, and he immediately fucking dies, of course. <laughs> but you're just like you decided to risk your life to go to work, like. And you were just like, I can get past the murderers, death heads. It's fine. Like, it's fine. It's just like, what the fuck? But it's really fucked up. And then there's another, but there's a lot of great ones in there. That's the thing. If you think about horror things, that motherfucker is so goddamn good at it. He's really good at like, it. He's really good. There was another one that I read. Like, these are just ones I read through that night. Was um, It was like, and some of them end like in a way that's like, it might as well be a cliffhanger, but it's not because yeah. it's just the way some horror stories end where it's like you horror don't really know what happens horror's not supposed to end perfectly <clears throat> that's yeah. the thing is it if doesn't it have does, to yeah it's just like one of them is like it's a guy he finds like a nice like place to to stay like it's like he rents a room out or he's, he's renting a room that's being rented out and he finds out that like every now and then you hear these the sound of what sounds like kids playing or, or fighting or something yeah and it's like behind this giant wall for some reason and so he tries finding out what's going on. He's like, well, I can't see anything that's in there. And so another guy approaches him. He's like, look, I used to live there at some point. I don't know what's going on there. He's like, I swear to God, though, I'm pretty sure their dead body is, like, over there somewhere. It's like, right behind that wall. Yeah. He's like, he's like, well, I don't know if that's true. He's like, look, I'm just, just look, check for me. Tell me if it's fine. And I'll, I'll call the cops and stuff. He's like, okay, sure. And so he goes down there to find out. And there's these, like, three silhouettes, like, in the wall. Mm-hmm. That like it might as well look like something, you know, like when in a in a in like a, a what the fuck is it like once like a nuke or something goes off, it just leaves like the imprint of somebody. Oh yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. It looks a lot like that. And the guy goes down to check, and he discovers he's like, oh, I think there's bodies or whatever down here. And it turns out like the daughter of the person who's like <laughs> a, a <laughs> light bulb just, just went out. Uh, on the her. daughter of the person who's like renting out the room had like murdered some people. Yeah. And like had buried them there, and she um. And sometimes she would leave the rope. Another way she would do it, she would, like, they would climb down there and then she would remove the rope so they couldn't get out and then they yeah. just died. And so she did that to, like, a, a, a handful of people. And the rumor, though, is that, like, sometimes the ghosts will pop out, pop out of the the silhouettes or whatever. But it doesn't show you that for, like, the entire thing. Yeah. And But what happens is the way she causes him to fall off the rope is she slashes at him, but she accidentally slashes the rope. Yeah. And so she doesn't realize that she's lost her rope. So he falls down and just knocks out. Yeah. And so she climbs down because she's, she's like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, climb back up. But the rope comes apart. Oh. And she's stuck down there. And yeah. she's like, oh, shit, I just got to get out of here before nighttime hits because that's when you hear the kids or whatever laughing and stuff. But then, like, nighttime hits and she freaks out and she turns around and you see the, the figure slowly Come out of coming the... out of the silhouettes. And then that's just how it ends. Nice. Because you know full well she's going to get fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> But it's shit like that. Like, that dude's really good at, like, not outright telling you things. And that's the other thing. Nothing gets explained. Yeah. And that's the best part about it. Like, every time something happens, you're like, what the fuck was that? And he's like, I'm not going to fucking tell you. Yeah, you just kind of have to Because once you know, it's it. not scary anymore. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, for instance, and sometimes they're hinted at. Like, the one with the, the mountain one, what it is is that they were, they were, like, making something. No, there's, like, an earthquake, and it causes a part of a mountain to go down. And there's just what looks like people-shaped holes. Yeah. But people are saying that some of them look like their silhouette. Yeah. So they go out of their way to go there to find theirs. Yeah. And you can just, like, go through it. And they just, like, sort of scurry like through, shimmy it. through it. They shimmy yeah. through it. Um, and then it turns out, like, you can't go backwards, though, once you go in. Yeah. You have to go all the way through it. 
and so people some people were like have gone into it and the main character is like hanging out with this girl who saw hers too and at first and he keeps having nightmares about people about like hints of what they could be yeah like what it is it's like it shows like a is, is like people are mad at me because i murdered somebody or something and i'm being forced down this hole and it shows like a guy shimming down a hole and then it slowly deforms as you progress through the hole yeah so it's like so you you slowly deform right. for it because it's a gradual process right and so he's like i wonder what that means and so he doesn't even think about it because he just keeps having these nightmares and then the girl goes in there and that's that's when he's like you know what i'll just go into mine and then it cuts again it's like weeks later or something there's a, they find the back of it and they're all like these super deformed yeah like holes and they're like oh i guess you know it's like these don't look like anything i don't know what the fuck this is but then he's like, hey, did you hear that? It's like, it sounds like something's slowly coming this way. And then it, like, cuts to, like, what, I guess the first person that went through one of the holes. Yeah. And it is fucking disgusting. Yeah. And the sound effect it gives it, too, is just, like, really fucked up. And I was just like, oh, God. And that was my introduction was that story. Oh, nice. And I was That's like, a good one. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and I just kept reading them. I, and I spent the entire night just yeah. going through these, like, through my phone. I'm just like, oh, got to read another one. Gonna read another one, and I just by the time I was done, I was like, I'm not going to sleep. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I, I can't go to sleep. Cool, I'll just sit with my back against the it's wall. Like one of these, one of these heads is gonna hang me. Like I know <laughs> full well it's dumb as shit that that's never gonna happen, but I'm just like, like yeah, I'm rashly thinking about it. Yeah, sometimes it's something that like sticks to you though. That's what I like about his story. It's that that specific one, like as dumb as it was, like it's it sounds really dumb on paper, but. But when you read it, you're like, fuck. <laughs> it's, um, it's like his writing is specific for inside your mind. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's not meant for well, like I said, hearing that's why, out loud or seeing. That's why I feel like the, the animated thing, while yes, there's some spooky and creepy stuff in the animated stuff, I don't feel they're as spooky or creepy or scary as the actual manga. Yeah. Because your mind is what really sells some of the stories yeah yeah like some of them are just like really strange like one of them i still don't understand it's even now like i read it like three times i'm like i don't i don't get it <laughs> the um the in the anime the what's it called the long sleep or oh yeah the, something like that where the every time this person goes to sleep so every oh i night, read the story for that one too actually it, it you know it, it's a longer amount of time so initially it felt like he was asleep and it'd be a full day and then he for it, like every night it would just get longer and longer and then it turned into like thousands of years and then it just kind of like decayed his mind um and his body right he just kind yeah. of disintegrates he, by the end yeah because um because i read i actually read the story for that one i didn't yeah. i didn't know they did the anime for that they one did, yeah but um okay yeah, i remember reading that one and i was like i don't really get what happened here but because what it is just, yeah it's like his 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 whole body just changes yeah like, he doesn't even look like a person by the time it's done like yeah. he looks more like an alien yeah and then yeah he just disintegrates yeah but it's just that stuck with me where it was just like the idea of it is so oddly tragic in a horror sense the ending of i don't know if, this, if the anime did the same ending though was that um it's, it's what they do with his like body afterwards or whatever yeah. With the the girl. Is the girl in there? Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's, like, a girl who's, like, afraid of death. Yeah. And he's just like, well, I injected her with it, so now she's having yeah. long sleeps. Yeah. And she's not afraid of death anymore because her life just keeps going like, now. Yeah. Yeah. No. But she slowly starts changing, too, by the time it's done, too. And the other doctor's like, why? He's like, I don't know. I want to see what would happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, like, kind of fucked up because he's just like, wow. He's like, it's helping her, though, I guess. And he's just like, okay, I guess. <laughs> And there's another one that I read that it's, I didn't understand it. Like, I still, like, it was, um, like, for some reason, the there's a drain is clogged or something. Mm -hmm. But it has, like, a nasty smell coming out of it that smells a lot like some dude that they were, like, teasing or something. Or he was, like, this disgusting dude that kept hitting on one of the characters. But for some reason, like, it, they're like, he's in the pipes or something. And you're like, I don't, yeah, I'm but confused. Like, how? like, but yeah. how is he in the pipe? And why is he in the pipe? And... Was he in the pipe the whole, whole time? Because I could have sworn I saw him before this point. Yeah. And then, like, one of them dies because, like, she puts her hand in the pipe and she gets, like, sucked into the pipe. And it's just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and mean, the story's like, and then it ended. And yeah. I'm like, uh, okay. You, yeah, you just kind of have to embrace, like, whatever he decides he wants to. There's one of the stories in here. I haven't read it, but I was flipping through. Is called The Long Neck. Uh, what was it called? the neck specter and then all the pictures for it are hilariously like giraffe neck monsters 
Like, it's just oh he, yeah it, it just looks silly to me um where you know it's just <laughs> somebody's head got stretched out but there was one that i read that i just remembered i don't think it's in that one but it's um this guy has a thing of honey mm-hmm. like, i don't know if you've heard of this one it's, he has he has a thing of honey it's like the best honey on like the planet yeah. like if you eat it you want nothing else like period like everything else tells tastes like shit yeah uh he says he got it from some like place in south america or something He's like, yeah, the only thing they told me when I got it was don't get caught. He's like, what does that mean? He's like, I don't know. And so they would eat the honey, and then you find, like, they go back to the guy's house, because he gave it to, like, his kid, and the kid's like, I'm going to bring my friends, and we're going to have the honey, and they're trying to figure out where he is. Yeah. And they find this giant, like, hunk of flesh on the, like, that's just splatted. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's weird. I don't know what that is. Because they can't tell it's a person. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know what it is. And then eventually they realize it's their friend. And he's like, well, I don't, what the fuck happened? He's like, I don't, I don't know. He's like, he's like, but we got the honey. So they all fucking take the honey. And somebody eats the honey and then they get splatted. Like, they're literally just eating it. They're like, it's really good. And then you just see this giant explosion of blood. Yeah. And the person's body just as a pan, like a pancake. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck is happening? Like, because... Because you never see them get hit. You just see them just explode yeah, like just into blood. Happens. And so they're like, well, we can't eat the honey. And then they, when they don't eat the honey, they can't eat. Because they think everything else tastes like shit. Yeah. And then eventually, like, you, eventually, like everyone just starts dying off because they can't stand it. They have to have this honey. Yeah. And they were like, well, they said we can't get caught. So how do you not get caught? Like, I can't figure out how it works. Yeah. And so one of them's like, I'm just going to hide in the water. There's no way. And they still get fucking splatted. Like, you just have no idea what it is. Yeah. There's no, like, rules to And so the last guy is just like, well, I know, I found this map. And the guy's, like, that one of them was, like, holding on to. He's like, I think this is the place of the honey. And it's this giant fucking tree with these, like, giant, like, flower part- parts at the end. And every now and then they'll just disappear. And, but then like reappear yeah and so you're like oh that's weird and then the guy's just like I'm just gonna get this thing of honey but then it shows that like one of the petals like flies down at him so it turns out what's going on is the petals are like dimensionally teleporting yeah and then murdering whoever's eating the honey and I was like that's fucking crazy yeah. shit because that's A the weirdest thing I've ever heard yeah and B is amazing who was just like <laughs> sitting there going <clears throat> murder flowers because of honey yeah, like, who, like, would think- <laughs> who would think that is the is the scariest Junji thing ever? Ito. And Junji the thing Ito. is, it's like I it was legitimately scary to me, like the yeah. idea of like being given something that tastes so good that you can't help but eat it. You can't, you can't, can't eat, eat it. anything else besides it. And something else is murdering you. There, you have no idea. Um, do you read SCPs? Do you ever follow the SCP Foundation? I thought about reading them, but I never got a chance. There's to. Um, one SCP that was a vending machine, mm-hmm. and you could put you could ask it for anything, and it would give you anything. And so they would just be like, they put it in the, so like anything that's not deemed dangerous, mm-hmm. they would just kind of let people use in the foundation, like wherever they were, the warehouse or whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, so there's this vending machine that would give you whatever you wanted. And so like people would just use it and be like, can get me a Coke, get a Coke, drink it, whatever. And it was fine. And no one was ever injured. And then one guy apparently asked for, uh, give me the best drink I'll ever have ever. Mm-hmm. Like the best drink I'll ever drink my entire life something like that they poured uh, he got a drink drank it uh went home and killed himself because it was the best he could ever have and everything else will forever pale in comparison and so then they had to like sequester it off into like you can't no one can use it because you guys fucking ruined it (laughs) this is why we can't have nice things yeah and it's just like this weird. We had the infinite vending machine, and you fucked with it. Yeah, like SCP <laughs> has really weird stuff. They had one that was a uh, a cake, a birthday cake that mm-hmm. would appear like once a day, I believe, and um, you have to eat it, the entire thing. One person has to eat the entire thing. If you don't, another cake will appear, and then you have to eat both of those <laughs> within a certain time frame. I forget what the time frame mm-hmm. is, and if you don't, like four appear like it just multiplies just and multiplies until you have too <laughs> many cakes to eat in that span of time that you are given mm-hmm. so you have so they have a person literally there waiting to eat cake every day oh well yeah it's just these like weird stories some of them are scary some of them aren't but um i love the scp foundation that's what i like about stories like that is because some of the best horror things come out of stuff that just 
doesn't make any sense yeah. at first. And like like that's what I think Portal is kind of horrorish. This portal doesn't make elements. any sense yeah. for some people because it's just like it's a scientific study of how I don't know <laughs> it's, it's a, <laughs> what happens if you give somebody a portal gun apparently right but it's also a rogue AI stuck in a um, like a test facility but that's what makes it so crazy is that like who like like because at least in the first portal because nothing's ever explained in the first portal yeah they're like why is any of this happening kind of thing yeah I and, mean it, and, it's like uh, the cube if you remember that movie yeah it's yeah. where like you're that. just kind of in there and it feels like it's a test but they don't really tell you why yeah you're just sort of doing things mm-hmm. but that's what makes portal so interesting to me because it is kind of horrific in the fact that you're like yeah we've done this a bunch of different times and there's no actual reason for any of this other than like let's see what happens yeah kind of thing and then in the sequel like it does explain a little more to it and makes Steven like Almost creepier. It's, it makes it creepier, but funnier because of the way it starts. Because it's just one dude slowly losing his shit. Yeah. But and, but it's funny at first, but then as it progresses, you're like, oh, him losing his shit but again, got to, really creepy. But again, to turn it into a standard <laughs> horror, you literally just have to say that it's a mad scientist that slowly went insane yeah. and created a rogue AI that is obsessed with completing these tests that don't test anything. Yeah. Also, I think the most horrific things come from stuff of people losing their minds yeah. more than anything. Um, which is why I think one of the scariest things, it's not scary, it's, it's scary but heartbreaking, is uh, the Ice King in yeah. Adventure Time. Oh yeah, for because sure. Because it comes out of nowhere is the thing. Because it was their, it was, this is the best part. It wasn't a Halloween special, it was a Christmas special. Mm-hmm. Which made it that much creepier. Yeah. Because it's taking this innocent time frame and then giving you, like, this story of a man losing his mind to the yeah. point where even he's like, I don't want to do this. Like, I'm sorry about anything I do from this point. It really turns the... He's a funny... You're just a dumb character when yeah, you hate you dumb. on its head. Yeah. It, it took... It made... It made Adventure Time more than it was yeah. from the get-go. Like, I used to not take Adventure Time all that seriously. Well, I mean, it started off happened. and it was definitely just, like, Adventure of the Day kind of Exactly. Show. But that's the thing. is it's the, it's the moment the series really turns. They're like, yeah, there's a whole thing going on here you don't know about. Mm-hmm. And, and then it alleviates it immediately after it's done, I think, in the best possible way. Yeah. Because the Ice King, the Ice King just goes, now you know my horrible secret. I used to wear glasses. <laughs> That's his takeaway yeah. from his tragic backstory. Yeah. Is that he used to wear glasses. And that is somehow that much creepier. Is yeah. the fact that he doesn't even know who that dude is. Yeah. He it's amazing. Yeah. It doesn't gauge him. Yeah. That's That show's really good about being horrific. Um, especially with the Lich King. Is it the Lich? Yeah. Lich, the yeah. Lich. Not the King. It's just the Lich. That dude is fucking terrifying. And he's voiced by Ron Perlman, yeah. which makes him twice as terrifying. He's so, it's such a great design, too. It's funny to like um, have characters that are scary, like legitimately scary, because he has that like exposed mouth, right? It's yeah, not... he's just a creepy looking like undead king thing. Yeah, and it's just, I don't know. It, and yet it still fits into the world. It's not like... Um, the misadventures, marvelous misadventures of Flapjack. Yeah. Like to do that um, old, like Ren and Stimpy style, like zoom in and everything's like hyper realistic and stuff. And they use that to be scary. But Adventure Time, I don't think has ever done that or had ever no. done that. Whenever it would zoom in and it would maybe do that, it wasn't even all that like it wasn't made. To, it wasn't. It was far never hyper realistic. From... It was still in its animation. Yeah, style. it was still in its style. And. Whereas with Flapjack, it'd be like, here's my candy wife. And it would show this <laughs> grotesque <laughs> fucking thing made yeah. out of candy. And you're like, oh, but the show's like, isn't that adorable? I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, and you just have to sit there and like <laughs> accept it. You know, uh, yes. Like no one questions the fact he has a wife made out of candy and he talks to it. Yeah. And probably does other oh, shit no, I don't want to like, think about with it. They openly talk about that he did other things to his and candy it's wife. It's so fucking gross when you think about it. Yeah. And cartoons were so good about doing that yeah and adventure time i think is one of the last cartoons that was willing to do horrific shit yeah and not explain some of it yeah like i think one of the i think one of my favorite episodes is actually you know go back into horror it's the uh it's like somebody's birthday party or something in a mansion and they're like 
They're, they're, <gasps> oh, the zombie thing? Aren't they yeah, zombies? Yeah, something like that. They're trying. They're like, but they did it to fuck with Finn the yeah. entire time, because they're like, yeah, we did this, you know, because to prank you because you were gonna prank us back. As like, well, what about the ghosts that attacked me in that one room? Because like early, like early on in the episode, he gets attacked by this giant fucking like green grotesque looking ghost out of nowhere and he freaks out and he runs away and you're like oh that's just you know because it's a haunted episode and then when the episode's done he's like yeah but what about the ghost that attacked me he's like what the fuck are you talking about he's yeah. like this is all the zombie and then you know that's disappearing he's like so none of that like what you what do you mean like that yeah. happened to me and they're like i don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's maybe. like you must have imagined it and like and it cuts back to like him remembering it and you're just like oh god what was that <laughs> right yeah i love when they give you those moments of like scary shit really happens and, and they maybe, just like walk away and you're and like it, you don't just get to say that and leave yeah and it maybe explains it yeah maybe down the line yeah it's just, god, that show is so good about that i'm sorry we talked about adventure time for a while there <laughs> no that's all right um we do should probably wrap things up we've been uh Going for a while. Going for a while now, uh, uh, especially with the edit. Last uh, horror thing. Yes. Evil Dead 2. <gasps> the most perfect movie on the planet. Army yeah. of Darkness was the first horror movie that I remember watching where I was like, I am in this. Like, horror is my thing. Yeah. That's... Uh, Sam Raimi is by far one of my favorite, most favorite directors. Like, John Carpenter, Sam Raimi, and Guillermo del Toro are my three favorite, like, horror directors. Those are all very good answers. <laughs> But yeah, Evil Dead 2 is still, to this day, one of, like, probably, to me, one of the most perfect movies on the planet. Yeah. Because when you mentioned, like, the, the horror thing about people going, when something says something's hor- horrific, it's, um, it's horrific because it knows, it balances comedy and horror and so much war with it than it's anything possible. a natural reaction to laugh when something scares you, and it lets you do that, I think, where it's, like, something scary, and it'll make you laugh. Because those two emotions aren't, if you go hard in horror and you're not, nothing's funny, everything's scary and horrifying, yeah. you're not, it's not going to be scary for long. Um, because a natural re- reaction to like a jump scare is to laugh for a lot of people. Yeah. And like for a lot of scares, it's just eventually to like laugh. You need to alleviate that tension. And Evil Dead 2, I think, does a, a great job of doing both where it's scary. There's a man slowly going insane. Yeah. There's a lot of like... La- but the things that are insane are laughable but if you're really thinking about a lone guy in the woods who thinks everyone he loves is dead and horrible things are happening and there's a deer head that's laughing with him and a lamp that's dancing next exactly. to him exactly it's the two scariest things in that film is that part yeah. of the like everything starts laughing at him yeah and he starts laughing because he's like what is happening? Yeah. And you're just, and you're with him. You're like, what is happening? Well, there are shrieks of fear <coughs> by the end of that. Like, he's laughing, but by the end, those aren't, that's not laughter yeah. for it's, him. It's like he's yeah. he's caught in the moment, and because laughter is contagious, Yeah. Um, he starts laughing with them, like, oh, God, you know, and he starts thinking, oh, well, they're laughing because the chair broke. Oh, that is funny. Ha, ah, you know, like, oh, my God. And then it's slowly like, I'm, I'm going insane, dear God. Yeah. Yeah, like actually, no. There's three parts that I think are the most the most horrific parts in that. That one still, the part where he's looking at the mirror, and he's just like, he's Talking. like, we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. And then it grabs him, and he's just like, we just chainsawed our girlfriend. We're not fine. Yeah. yeah and then he starts so choking himself. Fine, do you? Yeah, he starts choking himself, and then he realize, and then but then he it cuts out, and he's literally choking himself. himself. Yeah. And then the part where his hand starts turning on him. Yeah. And what makes that part horrific isn't even, like, the fact that it's turning on him. It's what he says right after that. And it's, and it's the way Bruce Campbell delivers that line where he just goes, Give me back my hand. Yeah, the, like, yeah, the like, like, sad desperation. He's for... just like, I've lost everything and you're taking my hand. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a moment that's, yeah, he's so desperate. Yeah. And you're just, you're, it breaks your heart. Because yeah. you're just like, God damn, Bruce Campbell. And he's so likable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's so good in that film, though. It's the pinnacle of, like, I think some of his best acting, like, period. Yeah, I agree. I agree he that, drags yeah. himself on the floor. Like, he, sh- he he's pretending to be unconscious while also dragging, dragging himself, himself on the floor. On the floor. And, and smashing things over his own head. And it's his, amazing. His hand is acting. Like, he's <laughs> the greatest hand actor of all time. Exactly. You felt when his hand saw the knife. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Where no, absolutely. Like, <laughs> uh, it's just perfect. Yeah. It's so no, good. It's, it's really good. And actually, uh, one of the things that I, I 
speaking of uh, Evil Dead Two, um, we went to a like last year. Or, mm-hmm, that was uh, last. We went to uh, uh, a screening of Evil Dead Two in the woods, uh, oh. and Bruce Campbell was there, and he actually explained something that I had never. It never dawned on me that that's how it, the two Evil Dead One and Two connect, because a lot of the times, you know, if you t- people talking about uh, Evil Dead One and Two, um, they always say, "Oh, well, Evil Dead One happened, Ash left, and then Ash is coming back with a new girlfriend, with a new Linda, with a new Linda," or oh. or you look at it as the first movie never okay. happened, and that Evil Dead Two is just a complete <laughs> reimagining. Um, th- those are the two ways that people talked about it. Well, I always saw it as, well, like well, most people did, but I guess with the third was just that if you just take out the explanation part in the beginning. Well, yeah, yeah because at the very, end of the, the very end of the first movie, there's the, the, the entity coming and it does the, the still like, ah, yeah. you know, rise it, and then it goes to a black credits. But then there's a scene in the, the, the opening where they're recapping everything just without all the extra characters. Yeah. Um, and then it, when you get to that scene of where the entity hits him and he's flying through the trees and everything, That's if you cut. cut everything before that and then put it right at the end of the first movie, it's literally it just picks up from there. It's yeah, all the same. Whole, that was my understanding it for the entire time. Oh, see, I I never I had never actually understood that because because I'd saw interviews with Sam Raimi and Raimi was like, yeah, Ash is the only idiot who would take another girl who happened to also be named Linda to the same cabin after the <laughs> horrific things well, that he did. Well, I don't the... think he can openly say it's a sequel or a connection because they were owned by two different production. Yeah, which companies. yeah, per, yeah. Is, actually, like all three of them are basically owned yeah. by different one at some yeah, point. Yeah, they're all owned by different uh, but, studios. Uh, I yeah, I definitely want to try to find or do myself a super cut of the whole thing. So it's that funny because you can do it. that with Ghostbusters. Technically, I thought I realized that as I was watching them again today, mm-hmm. because the fact that it just goes five years later, the second Ghostbusters two starts, all you have to do is cut the credits out. Of Ghostbusters one, and mm-hmm. just put the five years later right after that, and it just goes one smooth cut. Does it really? Yeah, because yeah. you could, you easily could do that. Huh. Because it's like, yeah, they won the day, and then it's just five, five years, years later, later, and then it shows that everything's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like an you, Always Sunny episode. Where it's yeah, just it's, like, it's everything's it's, gonna work out for us. Because <laughs> it's the funniest. It's the strangest part of Ghostbusters two is that it happens that it has to tell you it's five years it's later. later. Yeah. Like, why would it bother doing that? It's like you can just take the credits out of one. And just put it right next to each other, and it just goes through one giant film. Huh. Same yeah. way. And I would love to do that one day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I would sit and watch that. We should do that yeah, but Halloween I, celebration thing. Just do, like, we're going to watch the super, super, cuts. super yeah. cut of, uh, of uh, Ghostbusters and super cut of... <laughs> yeah, know, well, so I, I kind of, after hearing, after hearing uh, Bruce Campbell say that, and I know you can connect Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's not that easy. hard. Um, though it may be a little bit more editing to get around the beginning of Army of Darkness, um, but not hard to do. Um, I think the, the the director's cut fixes that, though. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, I because I know uh, a friend of mine uh, knows the guy who did the Phase 1 Marvel movie Omnibus. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard about that, where this dude, like, took all the footage from all of phase one including episodes of agents of shield that specifically oh, shit, really? dealt with stuff that happens in the marvel cinematic movies and then edited them together into one like nine hour long movie that's amazing uh and apparently he, he did it for him and his friends and then like only like ever made like one other copy of it um but uh and it made some news in the rounds that because he had talked about doing it mm-hmm. um and also like gave all the time codes so that if someone wanted to, like the time codes and where and where the scene pulls from. Oh, so if someone wanted to make it again. So if someone wanted yeah, to, else wanted it. to make it themselves, they could edit everything chronologically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you get everything that happens on all of the movies, all of the... Uh, so like there's literally scenes of like movies on uh, that are all happening at the same time, switching back and forth. But like done in a way that it actually cohesively yeah, yeah. works narratively. Um, so it... Uh, like I've always wanted to watch that. Like I was, I was like, oh, man, I wish I could have that. And then, like, then I heard Bruce Campbell's like, no, no, no. If you just cut here and put this, it's the same exactly story. Same he way. never left the cabin. Um, <laughs> he's like, I don't know why. He's like, we couldn't say it, but yeah. And it also makes him going insane make more sense. Yeah. No, yeah. Like that was the thing. That's why I was always confused by people who who have that argument as much as they do. Like, is it a remake? Is it a sequel? I'm like, just take this chunk out and just. Start well, right here. Yeah. I think the thing that confused people is the fact that 
a it's a different actress playing Linda in the the beginning of Evil Dead Two, and b there's a bunch of characters from Evil Dead One that are not talked about his mentioned. Or mentioned his the yeah. other part is that it has more about the Necronomicon in the beginning. Yeah, like it just explains everything about it from the get go, which I think is kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Like that little sequence in the yeah. beginning. Um, but no, I get, I get, but I kind of got part of why that was. But I always, yeah, I always thought that's what it, the point of it was. But because it happens sometimes, like sometimes like when you look at Back to the Future Two, technically it's kind of like that. It's just like, well, it's not the same yeah. fucking actress. Like I can accept that pretty easily. Like I, I was always confused why people couldn't accept that. Um, <clears throat> but I like it when stuff acknowledges that stuff. Yeah. Like, um, do you ever play the Evil Dead games? I played a few of them. Yeah. There was one called I think it was Regeneration. That has Sam Raimi's brother actually as like a side character. Midget, yeah, yeah. yeah. Midget side character. Raimi, yeah. I like that a lot because it's like an alternate reality. You're like, what if the Army of Darkness part didn't happen? Like, what if you, uh, like all the Evil Dead Two stuff happened, and so like you get attacked by all the characters from Evil Dead One and Two in the very beginning. It's the tutorial, and then at the end of it, he didn't go back in time, mm-hmm. and the cops found him and arrested the shit out of him for murdering everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's just a slaughterhouse. Yeah, and so, like, the beginning is like, yeah, he's in an insane asylum. He told everybody what happened, and, of course, they threw him in an insane asylum. <laughs> did you ever watch uh, Action vs. the Evil Dead? I did. Uh, I have, We haven't gotten through all of it, but they definitely talk about uh, everyone in his hometown thinking that he's a serial killer and calling him Ashy Slashy. Yeah. Something like that. Um, and it's kind of that same idea that, like, if he didn't go back in time, he would have to deal with the implications of what happened in yeah, that like, cabin. No one's going to believe that he did it so they weren't like undead monsters yeah. to murder him. They're going to be like, you cut them into pieces. Yeah. Like, you're a fucked up person. Like, I love the idea of like the implications of stuff like that. Yeah. And that's, that's what I kind of like. Like, I used to think Ghostbusters 2 was a bummer. But now as an adult, I'm like, no, that's probably what would have happened. Like, yeah. they would have got sued by the entirety of everybody, because how are you going to explain that to people who weren't there? Yeah. No one's going to believe that you took a, a giant 100-foot tall Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I love the weird... I love weird implications like that. It's because it's always the... It's always the thing that people think about, which is what happens after the happy ending. Yeah. And that doesn't get brought up a lot of times in fiction. And so when when that game did that for Evil Dead, I was like, oh yeah, what would happen if he didn't go back in time and Army of Darkness ever happened? Like, yeah. He would, of course, be thrown in jail in an insane asylum. Yeah. Kind of thing. And it's like, what if, you know, the ending of Ghostbusters, like, hey, we saved the day, but, you know, law still exists. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> like, yeah. I like, think... stuff like that. It's I, I love shit like that. I don't know why, but I just love shit like that. Me too. No, we went on All a tangent right. in there. Yeah, another tangent. <laughs> but uh, we're going to wrap things up now. Uh, before before we do, um, Michael, do you want to plug anything else that you're on that uh, other places people can find you other than here on Geek Bombast? Uh, I guess I'll plug Rage Select. You can find yeah. me on Rage Select uh, as well as everyone here. <laughs> yeah, everyone yeah, here. We're all on Rage Select. Except for the dog. Yeah. Which he should do. <laughs> dog select. That'd yeah. be pretty great. Just her and Archer. <laughs> <laughs> People would watch that. I guarantee it. Yeah. Uh, you can also find me on one of us.net sometimes. Okay. Nice. And uh, yeah, Amanda and I are here on Keep On Bass and on Rage Select. And, uh, but uh, for more, you know, next week, uh, I don't know who's going to be on next week or what the topic is going to be. Um, obviously, you know, by the time you hear this, you know, hopefully I'll get all my... The, it's been taking me a lot longer to get episodes online than I thought it was going to. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot more work than I was expecting. All the ghosts. Um, but, uh, spooky ghosts. Yeah, spooky ghosts have been, uh, been hindering me. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'll try to be more forthcoming with who's going to be on what episode and what topics we're going to talk about so people can ask topic-appropriate questions and things like that uh, for future episodes. Maybe less tangents. But eh, the tangents always happen. But it's going to happen with me no matter what. It's so going to happen with everybody. Yeah. The audience with that. <laughs> it, t- trust me, the, the the tangents are a staple of this podcast. All right. I just want to be uh, sure. But uh, so. Tangent cast. Tangent yeah. cast. That should be the other name for you, it. You just ask one question and then the whole rest of the time it's a tangent. Yeah, that, that's a show we should do. <laughs> um, and you know you can do it with the people in this room. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, but uh, so, you know, check us out on Facebook. 
As, our, as I said earlier, facebook.com forward slash geekbombast. Uh, we're on Twitter at geekbombast. Um, we, you can email us at geekbombast at gmail.com. Uh, we don't have a website right now, though that should hopefully change at some point Not in the do coming soon. year. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to hit me up on Twitter, I'm at John Sitton. Uh, does anyone else want to plug a Twitter or whatever? No. You don't have to. Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I don't even remember my Twitter anymore. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't remember I my Twitter. I call it the Twitters just to piss off my brother because I don't use it. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, we may or may not have a, an Instagram in the future. I don't know. I haven't decided. It's just going to be. Or I just haven't gotten around to doing anything with it. It's going to be joy with pictures of our You know what? Up. That's the joke that that uh, everyone said last week uh, on the first episode is that it's just picture of joy. Yeah. I'll do it. That's what that's what Mike's fucking Instagram is. Yeah. Pictures of Dean, her brother. <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, thank you guys for being on. And uh, I guess I still can't remember how I ended the podcast last time, but I guess. And end it here. Here you go. <laughs>